Mythos Busters, investigating the mystery, monsters, and madness of Arkham Horror, the card game. Hello and welcome to episode 68 of Mythos Busters. I'm Sean. Joining me tonight are my buddies Nick. Hey, Nick. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I good. Good. <laughs> we good. Also with us, we, we good. Also with us is Ian. Hello. Hi, Ian. <laughs> I good as well. How's it? What? Oh, no, we changed the format. Damn it. <laughs> All right, let's start over. <laughs> Scrap no. the whole thing. <laughs> Our standards are so far below that. Uh, welcome, everyone, tonight. We've got a fun episode. Uh, we've got some meaty catch-ups to do. There's, there's been some movement in the Arkham com- community. I don't know if you guys know this, but we'll get there. Uh, we're going to... Sorry, we are going to... Wow, I'm just so excited tonight. <laughs> We're going to go back to the news articles that we kind of skimmed over when Matt was with us last time, talk about them in more detail because more detail is warranted, and then there's, of course, a new news article that we'll get to. And for tonight's main topic, we asked our patrons for some discussion questions, and oh boy, did they deliver this time. Like, Mm -hmm. we've done this in the past, and like... Inevitably, two or three just diligent patrons or, or listeners will will play along, and we'll we'll have a little bit of play off of it. But man, we have like like in the fifteen or so questions that got sent in, so we're gonna get to those, and then of course we'll round it out with some technical time. But first, I'd like to check in with you guys and see what Arkham have ye playing? Have ye been playing? Wow, words tonight. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> Ian, what have you been playing? Uh, I have been playing a lot of Arkham, uh, but mostly it's been continuing, uh, my campaigns, uh, well, mostly my Carolyn and Agnes through Return to Carcosa, which after a kind of blistering good start, they've kind of petered out a bit, um, oh, in no. the last couple scenarios, yeah, uh, the, uh, Echoes of the Past was actually surprisingly difficult, although... Um, they managed to pull off a kind of uh, last minute victory and unspeakable oath was actually now that I'm talking about it, it hasn't been too bad, but basically last King <laughs> Agnes had some very uh, bad luck. No good. Very bad luck. Uh, oh, okay. So there were a few profound moments that stuck out in your memory. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I guess that's what it is. Like sometimes that skews how you view how you're doing. Well, cause basically she has <laughs> Who two are you talking to. I know <laughs> she is. <laughs> she has two physical trauma by this point. Agnes does. So that like skews me to think like it's not going well. But then when I look at the individual scenarios, they're like the resolutions haven't been that bad. Uh, last King, I interviewed three, I want to say, but Agnes got knocked out at the very end. Cause, um, she drew that stupid treachery that causes a lunatic to, um, charge at her and attack her boy we um, talked about it a little bit last time but the mm-hmm. last king got a shot in the arm didn't it <laughs> it really did because the thing is like that the that is a will test which normally would be like agnes would pass it in her sleep but um return to carcosa spoilers here if you don't want to be spoiled plug your ears for like 30 oh, seconds oh yes yes but okay there... i know exactly where this is going <laughs> there's a certain uh hidden treachery that uh punishes you for passing by a certain amount and causes you to fail instead <laughs> so agnes hit the had that in hand so of course with her high will i'm like praying for her to get like a well this is a rare occasion where i'm praying for her to actually get like a minus three or something but no she gets a plus one and passes it (laughs) by like a billion so that causes her to fail the lunatic hits her that's physical trauma number one and then phantom of truth holy bayaki like I think I yep. hit like five or six Bayakis in the first few rounds, and That's because even there's though a ton of them in the deck, yeah, because the return adds some, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah, there are already a lot yeah. in there. Yeah, and it more so, it was so enemy heavy, and um, all credit to Agnes, she actually managed to clear them all out by the end of it. But she was just so worn down, she got knocked out, and that's physical trauma number two. So. Mm. 
<sighs> I'm on pallet mass now, so I I will see how it goes. Like actually through a thermos and Agnes now <laughs> because she's rocking <laughs> to physical trauma. She's like winded, needs a lie down, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah, so I actually I have <laughs> we're we're at the exact same spot in Return to Carcosa. I have my Mark and Lola campaign set up next to me here in the middle of Pallid Mask or Return to Pallid Mask. Um, it's been an interesting campaign. I I'd say I I have experienced very similar highs and lows uh, mm-hmm. with what you described. Phantom was actually pretty good. I, I I don't know if you've been doing this, but I've been tending to do this with all of the return boxes. But where it says you like mix in the new cards, I've been just using the new cards oh yeah just Hmm. select all the new for sure yeah that's how i do all the returns (laughs) okay i just wanted to make sure we're on the same footing here um (laughs) but it's kind of cool because you get to a place where you don't all of a sudden know what location you're going into anymore like even Mm. even if even though in phantom vanilla phantom you switch two random locations for a lot of them you still kind of learn it i don't know it adds a little bit of a little bit of the mystery back into the back into the scenario when you do that Mm -hmm. and lola is still just she's doing her job she's she's getting it done i mean (laughs) yeah that's it that's that's usually as high a praise as lola gets guys i just i want i really 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 want to love lola i want to find like the the combination of cards that just make her sing crisis of identity ruins her i just i got i straight up got to come out and say it like keep in mind i I think everyone forgets this her ability is itself a weakness (laughs) and then she also has two crippling weaknesses in the deck Ugh. Ugh, i want to love her she's just making it hard right now Mm. i still gotta try out my tarot lola i'll probably bring it to arkham knights I'm <laughs> sure it'll be kind of standalone. terrible. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> That's like low hanging. That like fruit was sitting on the ground. <laughs> oh yeah, it, it, it got red, but Probably already. shouldn't have yeah. touched it. We stepped on it as we walked by, and then you picked it up. It's mostly ants at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, what have you been playing? Um, the little bit of Arkham that I got in was half of a game of Untamed Wilds. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I had some time between when uh, my when my Roland, my son, went to bed and uh, before I had to actually uh, start running D anD D last night. So I assembled my uh, Iron Man Finn deck at level zero, and then I assembled uh, Sean your level zero Diana deck. And I was like, all right, I'm just going to start running these two through uh, Forgotten Age. One, because I've never played Diana before. And two, because I want to see how Finn operates next to someone else. Like this deck specifically that I put together, how he operates, doing more than true solo. Um, And uh, uh, opening hands after mulligans for both of them. They both had two flashlights. (laughs) And those are the only assets. (laughs) So that was a great start. Um, I think I got... Uh, two cancels beneath Diana in about an hour and a half and Finn never got a weapon out it was a slog yeah it was not fun so I ended up just scooping that game because I'm like well I gotta go get ready for D&D anyway so I'll just I'll just do this again at some point um yeah I I like like looking at the cards in the deck like especially the Finn one um simply because again I don't know how Diana like I I know how she works but I haven't played with her before um mm-hmm. like I'm excited for Finn but yeah just that opening hand and then the card draw after that was just not working in his favor and Untamed Wilds you kind of have like it you don't have to go fast right away but it really mm-hmm. like it it gets a lot easier as you go if you can really hit the ground running um in that first scenario so yeah, yeah the uh, pace of that scenario is not slow no no Mm-mm. but yeah that's that's literally it for arkham that i've been able to play lately is half of a game of untamed wilds i still have not <laughs> even touched like i've i've sleeved return to carcosa but i haven't played it yet so i'm excited to but yeah yeah it's been good so far ne'er mm-hmm. ye fear brother because arkham knights it be upon us almost mm-hmm. Uh, so Arkham Knights finally officially announced the weekend of October 12th and 13th. Am I remembering the dates correctly? Yeah. So it's the 11th through the 13th. So if you haven't gotten your ticket yet, go out and do that. I think there are still some available, at least as of this recording. Uh, so a few different things we're going to be throwing on at Arkham Knights. Arkham Knights is obviously kind of a free form convention 
party? What would we call it? Event? Let's call. It, let's go with event. An event, yeah. So it's a freeform event. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to be running is on Friday. Nick, tell us about it. Um, we will be doing our How Low Can You Go Depths of Yoth uh, Survival Challenge. Um, yep. It's very, uh, very... Uh, informal uh we basically will have it set up at the beginning uh of the day like pretty much when this the place opens up and you're just encouraged to come by um grab participation swag there's nothing like you're not going to be you can track how well you do but there's not going to be any prizes or anything based on your performance it's literally just have fun seeing how many levels of depths of the uh, depths of the off you can get through um our participation oh, there's, swag is definitely prize point or uh there's definitely going to be prizes for the lowest level. We're going to have that, at least. Right? Okay. At the end of the day? Sure. Okay, yes, it has been decided. I have a second. Okay. <laughs> um, I think we... Yeah, I have, I, we have stuff that we can that we ha- can set aside for that easily. Um, there's a, a sign-up sheet in the Discord channel, um, and I'll have one in the show notes, as well, the same one in the show notes as well, so you're encouraged to sign up. We'll have um, cards that will show you some achievements that we have put together for this and you earn points based on how many achievements you get and also the setup of your scenario so the sign up sheet has the setup on there um you can choose to begin with some supplies or no supplies and different supplies will subtract a certain number of points so like starting with rope i think because rope in this scenario that's like the big one that lets you skip levels i think if i remember right so that one subtracts quite a few points whereas starting with like binoculars or something like that subtracts a few points and then uh as you play you can check off we'll have these cards at the event as well but you can go through these um achievements that we have and like an example is one of them is bare minimum at least one of your investigators survives through depth five so that's an achievement point right there mm-hmm. um just getting started your entire team survives through depth five and then there's for depth eight and depth 10 um, and then there's points for if you choose to start with 21 vengeance points you get uh, an achievement <laughs> just right when you start the game just you get that achievement point uh if you choose to do that same thing if you choose to start with the harbinger of Lucia in pursuit um, if you defeat Yig, if you uh, take care of the Harbinger or reduce her to half her health, if you defeat the Eater of the Depths. So there's a bunch of different achievements here. And then you also get one achievement point for every level that you get to. So um, so then at the end, you'll just track up all your points, and then we will have prizes for the team that gets the highest score uh, by the end of it. But again, it's very informal. Feel free to start and stop um, like whenever you want. You can even do it multiple times if you want to. Um, but we'll just, we'll look at all the scores that are reported to us that we have recorded. And, um, at the end of the day, we will have something for you. So, and you know what, let's, let's also give a prize to just a random team because if someone wants to come in and just not take it super seriously, still want them to be able to get something, Mm -hmm. but everybody, everybody who participates will get swag. Um, and we have seen that swag like just recently, just like yesterday, I think was when it came when mm-hmm. Sean got it, and it, mm-hmm. they look amazing, and I can't wait to get my hands on them. I'm going to have to wipe the nipple marks off of two of them, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> and just to be clear, these are not <laughs> the swag, the participation swag is not a new scenario that we made in secret, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was definitely a bar we didn't intend to set. <laughs> I think we were clear that it's not something we're going to do regularly. So, But yes, uh, you can pick up your participation swag, and then um, a couple teams will get uh, extra swag for playing. Yeah, I'm excited for it, because this is one of my favorite scenarios. I think it plays perfectly standalone, and I think this is a great event just to see how many levels you can get through. Mm-hmm. Love it. So then Saturday, of course, is going to be our Iron Man 2019 running through Forgotten Age. Um, air so, horn. Air, air, air. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you for that half-hearted vuvuzela. Hey, not a problem. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, everyone, I, I assume is signed up who wants to participate at this point. The one thing I'm going to say is we are going to have a little bit of an opening ceremony this year. So, everyone, bring your pool of weaknesses because we're going to make a little bit of a ceremony of drawing opening weaknesses uh, among the group. And more details to come on the morning. So that's going to take up all of Saturday, because it's Iron Man. 
However, when everyone finishes, we're going to go retreat to Tentacale time. I believe we're on number four this year. Is that Mm, accurate? Sounds right. God damn. Okay, so Tentacale Time 4 is at Joe Sensors, which is just a short walk from the FFG Center. Um, we rented a room. We generally get dedicated servers. This is It's basically, it's kind of like After Dark, if you ever listen, if you were at After Dark or, or listen to us describe it. Um, but people come and we just, we just chat and eat and drink and play simple party games and whatnot. And it's just a great way to cap out the uh, Iron Man day. Even if you didn't play Iron Man, you're all welcome to come. And that starts at 10.30 at Joe Sensors, so we're, we're kind of closing out the night there since... Yeah, what, what time did we finish Iron Man last year? Was it close to 10? Um, last year, we actually got to Joe Sensors pretty, like, earlier than we expected. I think we finished Iron Man a little after 8, or it was, it was before 9, I'm sure. Um, and then we got to Joe Sensors before that. It was the year before that. It was the Dunwich Iron Man that we were bumping up against 10.30. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. It was one where we were like, play, play, play! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and then Sunday is kind of a little bit more freeform. People generally just kind of pile together for, for pickup games. We are probably going to do another post-mortem podcast recording in the FFG Center. We're going to see if we can maybe have an area where if anyone wants to sit and heckle, you can do that. Uh, but more details to come on that. Uh, If you're interested at all in what we're doing on Sunday, be sure to join our Discord and hop in the arkham knights and worlds channel because that's where all the the plans and chatter is going to be oh god guys arkham knights like i have my ticket now it's real it's it's a thing that's happening (laughs) it actually will happen (laughs) so now i've actually booked my flight because i even though we had that kind of heads up i was nervous about booking a flight till it's actually real yeah that's entirely fair (laughs) (laughs) all right well ian what patron news have we uh, so first off, a uh, big general thanks to, as always, to everyone who supports us in Patreon and allows us to do all the various things we do and all the various projects and swag. Uh, oh, special and there's, f- there's a lot going on in the background right now. <laughs> <laughs> there really is. You guys there's don't like even a- know. <laughs> there's a lot of plates in the air and, uh. So far, we were happy to get, like, the musical episode out and our scenario, but there's more stuff to come, so... Thank you, patrons. Special thanks to our board members, Chris B, Chris H, Chris U, our conglomeration of Chris's, Cyclos, Alex, Ian, Kyle, Philip, Dave, Abilio, Nathan, Chad, and Robert. A uh, special shout out to a random patron this time around is Paul. No last name, just Paul. You know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Paul. <laughs> thank you paul um no new job titles this time if you want a, a cool job title uh you can go ahead and support us at the five dollar level or above and i think that's about it for patron business um i will jump in because i see you have a final note on here um about the constellation our uh our um board members i just wanted to give an update that uh, the scenario has shipped to our domestic board members and our international board members. Um, It will be shipping uh, this coming week. So you guys can look forward to that soon-ish. Woo! Oh, and then, yeah. Mm, So many things in the background I can't talk about I really want to. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, I will stay my tongue. Ian, we've got some exciting news to get to, so let's get to it. Yeah, we have a lot of news. Um, first off was the article that we briefly uh, delved into when we had Matt on the show last time around. But now we're going to fully do the the proper deep dive that the reveal of two new investigators deserves. Uh, this article, uh, it was titled More Than Meets the Eye. Um, and no, this, is, <laughs> this is not a Transformers crossover. No Optimus Prime investigator, sadly. But we did get a new Guardian and a new Survivor, so we'll start off with the new Guardian, and that means Nick is going to read him. Yeah, Tommy Muldoon, the rookie cop, is our new Guardian. Uh, He has three will, three intellect, four combat, and two agility. And his game text reads, uh, Police and Warden traded, and his, his ability is Reaction. When an asset you control is defeated, gain X resources, where X is the total amount of damage and horror on that asset. Shuffle that asset into your deck. 
Elder Sign Effect, plus two. You may move up to two damage and or horror from Tommy Muldoon to an asset you control, or vice versa. He has eight health and six sanity. Okay, so for our Iron Man last year, I had dubbed Leo as the revolving door of allies, and he has been usurped. <laughs> Because that's literally what Tommy does. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. This is the same yep. stat spread as Roland, right? Uh, yes. Which is a good stat spread. It is. It's solid. It's a good solo stat spread. Like, you know, if not having a one. Um, I mean, I know that we, we have that discussion about ones and how, like, they're actually not as bad as you expect them to be. But mm -hmm. I think that's speaking more when you're doing two-handed or in multiplayer. In solo, they kind of rear their head a little bit more. Um, and sure. this stat spread, I think, is a pretty strong solo build. Now, how do you guys think Tommy differs from Leo? Like, obviously, they're both kind of going to spam allies. But how do you think it plays out differently? Or how do you build that deck differently? Obviously, it, they didn't spoil the deck building here, but... Well, I, I kind of like Tommy as a multiplayer, like, shield, like, just like a paladin, basically. I, I think Matt made that comparison last time, mm -hmm. um, and I think that's really apt. Uh, so I like things like True Grit. Like, it doesn't have to be an ally. It could be something sure. like True Grit or um, something, something fight worth for. fighting for. Those mm -hmm. essentially become free soaks that the entire team can enjoy. One of the big things about the Guardian Pool is how many big cards you'd really like to play as a guardian and who boy this is a great way to just keep that engine rolling yeah he has the built-in resource gain which is huge um unlike leo he he well I, I guess he really favors like ditching your allies i mean leo mm -hmm. leo does too but at the same time like with leo you almost always wanted to go a charisma build so that you could have mm -hmm. a couple of constant boosts and a couple of others that are just shuffling in and out i don't think you necessarily need to do a charisma build with tommy right. um because his his ability isn't getting them in play it's literally getting them out of play so <laughs> right. um i think i th just at first blush here, I think that's going to be the big difference when I look at Leo versus Tommy is one of them wants a huge number of allies in play and the other one just wants a huge number in their deck. And I also assume that Tommy's going to have different card access. So the right. pool of assets that they'll be playing with and like, I just feel like they're going to, their, their ideal kit is just going to look different, even mm -hmm. though on the face of it, their ability looks similar. Mm hmm. Yeah, it seems like Tommy will be, although most Guardians can kind of play a tanky type role, role it seems like Tommy is going to be the ultimate tank in that regard. Like, if he's able to, like, make back money from every so soak that he plays out, which means he can probably play them right back out again, like, he can kind of just keep taking damage and horror forever, theoretically at least. <laughs> uh, <laughs> amount of actions in the game will limit that, but... Guys, yeah. what if he what if he has survivor access? I was just I thinking, like... That would be the best access. What his off-class... If he, if he goes the off-class route, that's the only one we haven't seen yet. In, mm -hmm. Oh, well, we haven't seen Mystic either, so... I know the cards are out in the wild, so people know this, but at this point, I'm I'm... I'm still adhering to the esoteric order of the street date. Cause, cause like your uh, cherished keepsake and your leather coat, mm. like they play down for free and then they, they net you two resources. And they're then if you've got you money, <laughs> yeah, they're love... making you money. And how many different ways does survivor have of pulling them back from the discard pile? I can think of like three offhand. If this is, well, I mean, it goes back into your deck with Tommy. So, um, Oh, right, right. Shut but, up. If if he is Survivor off class, I want someone to Photoshop uh, the Cherish Keepsake Teddy Bear under his arm on the artwork here. <laughs> I just love the idea of Tommy carrying it. Like, he's the rookie cop, and he's always bringing his teddy bear with him everywhere he goes. <laughs> Nick, and I think I, I was talking with you, and this is a complete tangent, but um, Tommy was the one where I was like, that would, where, that would be where I'd like to see, like, Norman's type of deck building come out again, where, like, he starts... Mm, yeah he, mm -hmm. the, he like he starts as mostly survivor in his deck building but he can level up into guardian obviously they went a different way here but i don't know maybe something similar survivor seems on point though i think yeah i 
that's that's what I that's what I I don't want to say expect, but that's almost what makes the most sense to me. Um, is going Survivor with Tommy. <clears throat> I, however, um, I let Matt have it when I saw that his signature was <laughs> Becky and not of the, the motorcycle. motorcycle. <laughs> Yeah, we should probably read Becky, because uh, it kind of plays into what he's all about. So, Sean, why don't you read Becky? Sure. So, Becky is uh, Tommy's signature asset. Uh, two cost. Has a combat, agility, and wild icon. Item, weapon, and firearm traded. Tommy Muldoon deck only uses two ammo. Each resource gained from Tommy Muldoon's reaction ability may instead be placed on Becky as ammo. <laughs> <laughs> and then action spend one ammo fight you get plus two combat and deal plus one damage for this attack and she takes up two hands oh, it's mm. so good tank and spank yep <laughs> i mean you're gonna run prepared or well prepared 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 for the worst thank you prepared, prepared for the yes, worst yep. we yeah got there. we got there like because I mean, yeah. the difference between finding this early and not is going to be pretty big Churning those allies into bullets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Melt them down into bullets. It's literally uh, like a video game where when the enemies die, they drop ammo, but this time it's your friends, so. <laughs> well, cool I, coins. I, 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 yeah, exactly. I do really wish he would have gotten the motorcycle, but you know, this is cool, I, I guess. <laughs> and Matt was like, well, it doesn't make sense in some scenarios. I'm like, an orphan like out in the me- Mexican jungle doesn't make sense. Like, we can figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I do wonder how this is going to play out at higher levels because it, it takes up two hands and like if you're thinking about your bars or your flamethrowers or your lightning guns like but then Becky is like such a signature part of what he's I mean I guess I guess you can be fine without Becky like it, it's like it, it's interaction is basically just giving you a kind of limitless gun right but that's not essential necessarily but but still it it kind of like at higher levels maybe becky like there's some tension there with the other cards you want to take i think this is your this is your combat answer or uh this is going to see more use in scenarios one two and three i think Mm -hmm. and then once you can afford shotgun or bar um or flamethrower if you're going that route um once you can afford one of those bigger guns, those are going to become the staple, and you're probably going to end up only playing this when you absolutely need to, or pitching it to tests. I would guess. Mm-hmm. So Tommy's like first couple experience are Brother X, right? Oh, uh, yeah, I yeah, think so. That's going to be so good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, just making sure. the The only thing I wonder about with Tommy for solo is like because of his ability it just seems very action intensive that if stuff is constantly going out of play you're gonna have to spend actions to get new stuff into play to replace it versus someone like roland he's built in like action compression so i just i have a slight feeling that tommy might be better in multiplayer but we'll see it makes perfect sense to me. i think that's a yeah fair assessment yeah uh we didn't look at his weakness his weakness is let me pull it up I should I should have it ready. Well, that uh, was rookie, a rookie mistake. Yeah, that was, <laughs> rookie mistake. Um, looks like there's uh, the cave troll from Fellowship <laughs> of the Ring behind him <laughs> in this art. Uh, so rookie mistake is a weakness. It's a blunder. It's a flaw. Revelation. Discard each asset you control with damage or horror on it. And if no assets are discarded by this effect, shuffle rookie mistake back into your deck. That's painful, because I would that, imagine, yeah. as Tommy, you're probably going to have two or three things in play, ideally, that mm-hmm. have soak on them, and you're probably going to be spreading the damage out so that you can cash in on them when you need to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, man. It could play, be meet, counterplay. Calamitous, yeah. <laughs> I, I feel that might change how you... Because you're right, Nick. Like, almost every investigator you play, usually you're spreading them out among, like, your soaks. But maybe, Tommy, this is encouraging you to just, like, nuke each asset one at a time as damage and horror comes in. Well, I mean, maybe. That's also maybe, playing around yeah. one card in your deck. Which... <laughs> sure. Okay, so the next new investigator has kind of set the community on fire as she should 
And even though she's a survivor, she kind of gives me some mystic-y vibes, so I'll let Sean read her. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, if she's not off-class mystic, I will be upset. <laughs> Song um, cards only. <laughs> <laughs> Patrice Hathaway is the violinist. She's a survivor. She's got four willpower, two intellect, two combat, two agility. She has the performer and cursed traits. Your maximum hand size is reduced by three. That's a hell of an ability. During the upkeep <laughs> phase, instead of drawing one card, discard all non-weakness cards in your hand and draw until you have five cards in hand. And then Elder Sign Effect, plus one. After this test ends, you may shuffle all but one card from your discard pile into your deck. Mm. She has seven uh, health and seven sanity. And so we've talked about her a little bit. Before we go past it this time, because I went past it last time, and it only just hit me now when I read it. That is a bomb-ass uh, Elder Sign ability, isn't it? Yeah, I mm-hmm. also did not fully register it until you read it right now for some reason. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. One we... card. I can <laughs> the rest in. Because we talked about her comparison to Aristor, for those of you who played Lord of the Rings, drink. Mm-hmm. And it's such, it's just a problem in that game where by the game's normal framework, if you run out of cards in your deck, you just you're just done drawing. You like there there was one card in Spirit because Spirit has fucking everything in that game. Uh, there's one card in Spirit that can reshuffle your deck into your or your discard pile into your deck, but that is it. Here, being able to reset and leave a weakness out, mm. Mm. so good. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh yeah, I've seen a lot of discussion in the various places uh, in the community, and I think we mentioned it last time, but you can tell the people who don't have experience with Aristor this kind of ability, because they tend to be the ones who are like, uh, this investigator is underpowered, like Pachisa is going to be underpowered. I haven't played with her yet, but I have a strong suspicion she's going to be really, really good, just based yep. on my experience with Aristor. <laughs> Guys, it turns out in a card game, it's really good to just see a lot of cards. So, do you build her super event heavy? Like, do you have maybe a few assets, but you just go ham on events when you're building for Patrice? Because you can't really do what is kind of a trap, but I know a lot of people do it, where you're like, I can't play this asset right now, but I want to play it, so I'm going to hang on to it for a few turns. Well, yeah, you just yeah. can't do that with Patrice. That's what I mean. So, so do you? Yeah. So do you? Do you build your deck to you know with that in mind? You know what I mean? Yeah, I think in general you probably want to build a low curve. Mm-hmm. If you're not building a low curve, you probably want to make sure you include literally every economy option available to you. <laughs> so that way, mm-hmm. if you do happen to drop in resources and you see the card you want to play, okay, we'll assume she has off class Mystic because that's the world I want to live in. If you draw your right of seeking, you better hope you also drew your uncaged the soul with it. Mm-hmm. Right. So, but the thing is, is you're like, oh, five cards a turn, guys, in a in a game where I, I assume she's gonna have a thirty ish card deck. She will probably maybe have a bigger one, right? Maybe. Potentially, yeah. Mm, yeah There'd be know. an argument for it. Yeah. Either way, though, it's not gonna be like above fifty, and no. that's. That's a lot of churn. So, yeah, yeah. you're gonna She's... be you're you're gonna find those weaknesses quick. Yep. Yeah, that's definitely something to keep in mind that for the weaknesses and for her cards in general. Like, she's one investigator where you're pretty much guaranteed to see every card in your deck. Mm. Which, if you draw no indebted with Patrice, <laughs> you're oh my be god, a happy camper <laughs> <laughs> compared to say doomed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh my doomed god, would be terrible. <laughs> Patrice plays herself, like, just marches herself straight to her doom. Yeah, it's just a little lemming. Uh, (laughs) It's another thing where we'll have to see what support she gets, because, like, uh, Aristor in Lord of the Rings, he got an accompanying card that you discard cards from hand to lower the cost of certain allies, and I don't know if we'll see something equivalent to that, but... I'm sure that the survivor cards in this block are going to have a healthy amount of things that are either playable from your discard pile or are of benefit to you to either the, like they allow you to discard other cards from your hand for some benefit a la cornered mm-hmm. or yeah or they have icons and 
they're they're good because they have icons. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a, a case of like you'll always be able to just at the end of the day you can commit everything from hand to to raise her stats, and that's something that me in Lord of the Rings because there's not that mechanic of committing cards. Sometimes you could get stuck with cards in hand that you can't really do anything with. But with Patrice, as long as it has icons, you can do something with them. I remember playing the Star Wars LCG and how freeing it was when I finally went, when I went, like, I think I went three turns with the Emperor still in my hand. And I'm like, wait a minute, he's got four Force icons. Why don't I just pitch him to a Force (laughs) test? Like, he's not going to hit table. Um, And once I, like, went over that hump and I was like, okay, I play everything I can right away and the stuff i can't play is now force icons like i just wouldn't even think about you know trying to hold on to stuff and play it like it is a very freeing way to play the game um oh, it changes the entire landscape of the game when you've got yes. an option like that exactly yeah so mm-hmm. yeah patrice is gonna be a lot of fun and potentially those survivor cards that fetch stuff from the discard pile mm. uh, gets even more play from patrice I like what uh, what Sean brought up because, <clears throat> excuse me, I had been looking at the suite of like impromptu barrier and improvised weapon and all that and mm-hmm. thinking like, when are we going to like, is that, is, are these something, because they're obviously, they're playing with the same theme, are these something that we can build like a deck that features all of these and it's useful? And I have yet yeah, to it's find Wendy. one. Yeah, well, <laughs> even still, <laughs> I think there are better choices for Wendy than like improvised weapon. You sure. know what I mean? But Patrice definitely seems like the invest like the first investigator that that seems like a very good idea to include them now again mm-hmm. i obviously don't know survivor's a class i play the least of so i could just be you know whistling dixie but i don't know <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of support cards we should probably look at our violin so patrice's violin is a two cost asset uh a will an agility and a wild icon item an instrument traded to uh free uh, trigger choose and discard one card from your hand and exhaust patrice's violin choose an investigator at your location to either gain one resource or draw one card and it takes up a hand slot so there's a little bit of of resource play for her because i'm sure mm-hmm. that she needs it yeah. the flexibility is great it's yeah. cheap mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's only one hand instead of two i expect i mean like you have to bu- <laughs> hold, have to hold a bow right like that's she's not thing. playing it she's picture. just waving it around she's showing it to people <laughs> it's a stradivarius um S- sadly I, though missing the relic trait unlike jim's trumpet oh that's true um i think you go for the draw a card most of the time right like i think the resource is just there for when you need it but the draw a card is the real ability right well we were just talking about how we want to run a low curve and occasionally you might not be in a position to play the card that you finally drew right and this helps mm-hmm. i don't know i feel like I feel like you're right probably you'll draw the card most of the time but i feel like there will be some clutch situations where that resource saves you right yeah and nick why don't you look at the weakness for patrice <laughs> oh i'm so happy because i love this weakness <laughs> <laughs> watcher from another dimension is a an enemy weakness uh it has five fight two health and five evade it is monster and extra dimensional traded it has the keywords peril hidden and hunter uh so that means you can't talk about it it goes right into your hand and it stays there and it follows you um its revelation effect is secretly add this enemy to your hand you may fight or evade this enemy while it is in your hand as if it were at your location if you succeed discard it from your hand if you fail spawn it engaged with you and then forced when your deck runs out of cards if this enemy is in your hand it attacks you from your hand, and it deals three damage. Wow! <laughs> I love this enemy so much. Oh my god, it's so cool. The design of it is amazing. Um, the fact that it interacts with you while it's in your hand, and you can choose to ignore it. Um, but it still sits there and stares at you. But Yeah, but you know that you're going to have to deal with it eventually, and every so often you're going to get one of those games where in the last five cards that you draw, this is going to be one of them, and then you're just <laughs> SOL, and it just whops yeah. you for three as soon as it shows up. Oh, man. It also slows your card draw down, because you're only going to be mm-hmm. seeing four cards a turn mm-hmm. while this is in your hand. Yeah, no, I love everything. I wish, I wish this was, like, they made a 
or they, I wish that Matt designed a basic weakness enemy that functioned similarly to this <laughs> because it's just so, it's so interesting and unique. Um, like I want to play Patrice just because I want to interact with this thing. <laughs> So I know there's been some rules questions people have been wondering about the as if it were at your location, like can you use a stray cat to evade it? <laughs> um, and I do not know if that has been answered yet, but that would that would be interesting because then you could potentially just keep a stray cat on the board, which is cheap to deal with this. But well, I don't stray know. cat isn't it's not an evade action, is it? It's a like I feel like you may fight it or evade not. means you may initiate fight or evade abilities. Yeah, I think that is the source of the uh, the big rules debate. Because hmm. it's hmm. just an automatically evade. Yeah, it's not a evade action. Stray cat is a good little ally, isn't it? Yeah, it doesn't get a lot of attention, but I've been looking at it more and more lately. It's pretty. It's great in a level zero deck. Mm-hmm. It's about to be overshadowed by cats of greater renown, though. <laughs> that That is true. All right, so that's Tommy and Patrice. So we'll move on to the next article, which was A Thousand Shapes of Horror, which is the second? Yeah, second Mythos Pack in the G-Meter cycle announced already. This is 2B, because this is uh, this campaign. There's basically two campaigns going on at once so this is 2b so i guess that means the second scenario of the b campaign is that i how don't this know my working? brain hurts i, I know <laughs> i don't think we're gonna know <laughs> until we get our dream eaters boxes this week actually it's coming out um oh for real oh yeah, i'm not ready i'm yeah. not even through return to carcosa <laughs> yeah for <laughs> friday the 27th is the, uh, i still have a test US run of tfa to do <laughs> 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 yep it's coming around the corner um yeah that'll be interesting to see how it works because i don't know this is a whole other discussion but like thinking about because usually it's like choosing who which investigators you're running through a campaign but maybe now you're picking choosing two sets of investigators i don't know that'll be interesting um okay so uh the first new card in these this article we got a few player cards spoiled is the other world codex and nick do you want to read this one sure uh other world codex is a level two seeker asset takes up a hand slot has a resource cost of three has an intellect and will icons item and tome traded and its game text reads uses three secret uses three secrets god damn it. <laughs> one day we'll get it <laughs> action exhaust other world codex and spend one secret Search the top nine cards of the encounter deck and choose a non-elite card among them. Discard a copy of the chosen card from play. Shuffle all of the search cards back into the encounter deck. Mm. Nice. There's one David Stokes book who uh, is a huge fan of Rossiel in Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. Um, who does very similar shenanigans to this. And, oh man, this this is a really interesting little mechanic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. trying to think of i'm trying to think of some big ones like carcosa has a ton of them carcosa has a bunch like in that there's that black stars rise uh set is that the name of it i can't remember the name of the set now but it has six treacheries and they all attach to locations mm. um and this would be good for something like that uh, i also think of locked door or secret door in the case of return to dunwich like this is a good way to just but then again those are low count cards too so i think how about a problem how about a chump ally? Or a chump I was just thinking enemy. you're probably using mm-hmm. this for like those cultists in Boundary Beyond, sure, um, stuff like that. <clears throat> oh my Anything god, with this Doom is a on it? really good solution to a Brotherhood cultist. Oh, yes. I love this card so much with all yeah. the yeah. They got three Doom on them, and you can't touch them. Just otherworldly co- codex it, and then search the nine cards and don't find any of them, and then flip the table. <laughs> okay, it, that sounds because that's like gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> The nice thing is uh, Mandy can resolve a second target of this. Oh, oh, God. How, yeah, or so, dig deeper if you're desperate. Or dig deeper, yeah. Oh. So she's a good user. I think this is potentially good for Daisy. Like, use yep. that extra action to do this. Because you don't want to spend one of your regular actions, maybe. This is one of the first tomes since Old Book of Lore that mm. makes me go, Oh, I would run this in Daisy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, yeah, three secrets is a little like I'd love four, 
Um, mm-hmm. So I I would might I might even like it would make me look harder at secret tech. I yeah. think, um, yeah. especially in a multiplayer game, I would look harder at secret tech because of this card. Uh, so yeah, very exciting. I, I this is one I need to play with to see how often that top nine hits. Like I don't feel like I have a good sense yeah. right now how often that's going to hit. It's going to change so much from scenario to scenario, too, because Mm -hmm. some of them have small encounter decks, and some of them, like, usually scenario eight in a campaign, has a fucking monster encounter deck. (laughs) Um, And then if you do this in... No, go ahead, Nick, sorry. I was going to say, if you do this in TCU, then you've got a scenario where you have two encounter decks to deal with, and you're like, I don't know, like, it's... Mm -hmm. Oh, this is going to... This one is very scenario dependent. Mm -hmm. I think it is interesting, though. I think you... I think it's going to hit pretty well. Because you can look at the discard pile. I think the only time this is going to be really iffy, really iffy, is at the very beginning of a scenario. Mm, mm-hmm. And I don't think you're ever going to use this at the beginning of a scenario. So I, yeah, I think this is, I think this is going to be good. Oh man, um, oh, undimensioned and unseen just discard one of the brood. Oh no, they're set aside, aren't they? They're not in the You deck. could yeah. potentially get one shuffled into the deck, though. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you can close call one, one into the deck. <laughs> you can't do it on return because they're all different, but in re- in vanilla, undimensioned and unseen. Ooh, ooh, oh my ooh. god. Um, shoot, what's the, uh, what's the look what I found equivalent to evading called? Dumb, Dumb luck. luck. Mm-hmm. Yep, there you go. Oh yeah, Dumb right Luck get into the deck and then... No, right on top of the encounter deck. It puts it straight on top of the encounter. Uh, yeah, deck. you're guaranteed. Yep. <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, do we know Nailed Mandy's? It. Do we know Mandy's deck building? Can she take dumb luck? I don't think we know. I don't know, but yet. Min can run this hella combo yeah, that I just yeah, invented. I was just thinking Mandy because then you know you get one trigger for sure, and then you could pick a second one. You know, out of the nine. <laughs> oh, I love okay. it! I love that jank. This is cool. This is cool. Yeah, I I kind of like this in in. Uh... TFA too for there's a lot of those like location attached treacheries if it can get rid of vengeance enemies without having to incur the vengeance yeah the pit vipers there's four of them in the yeah. is there three or four three uh, might be, might just probably be three, three. three there's yeah. three pit vipers and one of the anacondas I think mm. boa constrictor hmm. boa constrictor wow yeah it don't want it don't want none though <laughs> <laughs> might have to have a talk with Scott about including this for Iron Man then. Oh. <laughs> it's not a relic though you're gonna have to hard sell them yeah, yeah. <laughs> it'll be a conversation we'll, we'll, have, a ta- write... we'll have a taco with them like 2 a.m the night before <laughs> yes <laughs> i would say i can write illicit on it and then just throw it in <laughs> let's just get him loaded and talk circles around him eventually he'll relent <laughs> all right the next card is a purple card uh so why don't you read ethereal form sean Oh, I would be happy to. Um, So Ethereal Form is a level zero mystic event. It's two cost, has a willpower and agility icon, has the spell trait, and is an evade. Add your willpower value to your skill value for this evasion attempt. If you succeed, disengage from each other enemy engaged with you, and for the remainder of the round, you are Ethereal. Guys, that is active (laughs) game text on a card in the game (laughs) that we play. You are Ethereal. The parentheses <laughs> explains uh, enemies cannot engage or be engaged with you, and you cannot attack or deal damage to enemies. <laughs> so cool. I just I huh, huh, there's so many things going on here. Um, first, adding your willpower instead of just using your willpower that's new and awesome. And ooh, I mean, people are starting to run survival instinct right for for solo or for like heavy like dodge tanky stuff Mm -hmm. sure just to be able to evade if you're playing mystic chances are you're hitting that test like every mystic that i'm aware of is swinging on that test at at least like a seven trying to think of who wouldn't maybe norman yeah norman would be swinging at a six but still or at at a five anyway you're probably hitting that test and then you're just done dealing with enemies for the turn you can oh ooh, oh okay someone else say something my brain's overloading (laughs) I even beyond the the power level efficiency of all that, this is just falls in that category of cool effects that I, I just love game techs like that. That's like we talked we talked about Tommy being the paladin, but this is the bubble hearth card right here. Yes, 
because you pop it, you're invincible, and you can't touch anything, and then you just run away. Like, this <laughs> is the bubble earth from this, anyone who's played WoW. This is going to be so good in Solo Mystic. This yeah. is be so oh, good yeah. in Solo Mystic. God, we're this uh, another level zero super amazing Solo Mystic card. Like, I remember, like, Sixth Sense came out, and that was one that we were mm-hmm. like, ooh, that's so good. Oh, my God. I like it. Safina loves this. I, I wouldn't yep. mind putting one of these under Safina. Oh, just be able to nope out like three times a game. <laughs> yeah, and the fact that it's the remainder of the round. Yes. Even the even the enemy phase, like if yes. you're at that location, it's not going to hit you. I'm just sad that nowhere on this card does it say ignore or cancel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the probably round, gonna go. Force at the end of the round, cancel your etherealness. <laughs> Yay. We did it. Anyway, really cool card. I'm sure this is going to find its way into decks. I wonder if we're going to get an upgraded version that also like somehow avoids damage and horror because you're ethereal, so nothing can hit you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ooh, that would have ignore on it. Yep. That would have to, let's see. Yeah. yeah. That would have to last until through the next mythos phase or something like that, like delay the inevitable to really be worthwhile. Agree. Okay, uh, the next card... Well, we'll we'll save the next card for a second, because <laughs> it's a big one. Uh, let's go to the green card, which will be mine. <laughs> um, the new rogue card in this pack is Let God Sort Them Out. This is a zero-cost, level zero event with a combat icon. Tactic, so Mark can take it. Faded. Play only during one of your turns in which you defeated enemies with a total of six or more health. Add Let God sort, sort Them Out to the victory display and immediately end your turn. When earning experience during the resolution of the scenario, you earn one additional experience. Nice. This is one that Mark will take. <laughs> yeah. For sure. <laughs> He's probably actually one of the better takers of this yes. card. That can take, yeah. Yes. Leo would take this. Um, uh, Skids probably, maybe. Um, Finn, maybe. Yeah, yeah. The hard part about it is because it itself costs an action. That means with the other two actions, you have to have defeated enemies with a total of six or more health, um, or you Which have extra nothing. actions to spare. I, I guess the way it's worded, it's not that you're. It's not like you're dealing six damage. It's just that you defeated enemies with a total of six or more health, so they could be previously damaged. Do you run this with uh, on the hunt to set yourself up for this? Like, how mm. much do you devote card space to triggering this? Mm. I mean, if all, all you the... do is kill enemies, on the hunt is a good card anyway. True. <laughs> yeah, like Tony probably is running on the hunt anyway. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Stokes in our chat. Uh, Safina with Storm of Spirits and Painted World plus Delve XP Farmer. <laughs> oh my god. I like the way you think, David. Right. <laughs> it's it's fun. Like I like I don't I don't know how often and and Jeff in chat brings up a good thought as well. How hard do you try for this in solo? Mm. I don't know if I'd run it in solo. Almost never. I yeah. don't think so. It, it but just, four player, I would. It it's not even about like killing that much health. It's about finding that much health in yeah. solo is the problem. Mm-hmm. You'd have to you'd have to manufacture this way harder. Yeah. Like I don't think right. you play this in two player most no, of the time. I probably three or four player. Yeah. Yeah. If this had one more icon I could argue for it. Like if this was a uh, I'll see you in hell where you're like, yeah most of the time it's just overpower without draw. But that one time I needed it, I took those things down with me. What if it was but, fast? Like you could yeah. still get your three actions in. I, would, I don't know. Just definitely more playable. It changed things yeah. a bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think one of the tough things is probably one of the best cases for this are bosses. But then when you kill a boss, that usually ends a scenario. So then you don't have time to play this. <laughs> oh God, that's right. Yeah. I mean, th- there's some scenarios where there are like boss-like enemies that you could do it. Would it? Never mind, I don't want to redesign cards. That's <laughs> That is idle conversation. <laughs> All right, let's get to the big one in this pack. Uh, every now and then, there comes a card <laughs> that redefines things. And that card this time is versatile. 
And uh, Nick, I think it's your turn to read. Sure. Versatile is a level two neutral asset. It is permanent, is talent traded. And its game text reads, you get plus five deck size. Yay? <laughs> your investigator's deck building options gains one other level zero card from any class. Guardian, Seeker, Rogue, Mystic, or Survivor. So I'm more mixed on this card than I think a lot of people are. Um, because you're adding one card from any class, but then four cards from your existing class. So I just question how often that... Like, obviously, you I, there are some people you probably wouldn't play this in. But I'm just questioning how much that... How often that, that one copy is going to show up. Is it going to be worth it? I don't know. I'm in about the same boat as you, Nick. Um... Like there are so many little cards. Where I'm like, oh, that'd be really cool if I could include X with X inve- or with Y investigator. But at the same time, there has to be a lot of draw for me to see this as a boon because plus five deck size is significant. Like the chances that you will see this card that you spent two XP on and are now diluting your deck four mm-hmm. diminishes. Exactly. But when you see it, it's going to be real cool. Well, <laughs> sure. Yeah, and it potentially is affecting the consistency of the rest of your deck. Oh, yeah. Not even just affecting finding that card, but finding the other important cards in your deck, too. So I think this boils down to a few scenarios. One, probably the most prominent, it's a fun jank card. So if you Mm -hmm. want it, this allows jank that can't otherwise exist. (laughs) Um, Two, like Sean said, if you have a draw-heavy build. And three... For whatever reason, if you have a gator who, like, wants more cards, like, maybe, say, a Safina that she wants more events to to play with, um, but, yeah, it, it's not like, it's not like a charisma type thing. Like, it changes things in a big way, but not in the same way that charisma was like, okay, everyone start taking this. I think, I, I think it's just, it allows things to happen that couldn't happen before and since it's neutral Sometimes. obviously it just opens up the door for just anything but at the same time your first four experience as patrice go to this right <laughs> depends on what her base deck size is but my instinct says yes i mean even if even if her base deck size is like 40 right because you you're not adding to include a couple extra not, cards yeah, well, not just to go to 50, because you're not adding extra weaknesses, but you're still churning through your deck every turn. Yeah, like, no, I, okay, I agree with you. Yep. Yeah. You won me. Yeah. <laughs> like, that that's the standout. I mean, obviously, because we just talked mm-hmm. about her, so she's fresh in my mind. But yeah, there's a lot of other times where I'm looking at it, and I'm like, like, yeah, it would be fun to have, you know, something like this particular card in this particular investigator, like you said. But yeah, just like, ha, huh, I'm so much I'm so much for consistency. Like mm-hmm. I try to get my decks to two copies of everything, um, if at all possible. Mm-hmm. And ugh, like I don't know, I'm a big fan of a cheeky one of here and there, so I, I understand. I understand. <laughs> I don't know, it'll be cool. Just being having played card games for a while, yeah, I'm in the same boat that consistency is king, like over and over again. But then there are times when I'm like, I just wish I had more space for more effects but then i know that's gonna ruin consistency so i don't know um yeah it's a tough one i think it's certain builds it's not for everyone but more than anything i think the fun stuff it enables is gonna be interesting um so on that note we're gonna do not really a game but a little exercise so we're each gonna propose uh three kind of use cases for versatile that we think are either cool or potentially powerful or just something to think about so let's see who do i want to start with let's start with sean what's your first versatile fun use case well i know this is a really basic answer but lucky cigarette case in literally anyone who who has a high stat Man, I was worried um, about mine being bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, but hear me out. It's just a no. Great I agree card, with you. And it also offsets that deck delusion, that, or at least sh- sh- theoretically should help to offset that deck delusion that uh, mm. the versatile inherently carries. 
You went back to that fruit tree that we passed earlier. <laughs> it's all ants still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting one because it's a way to bring card draw to someone mm. who maybe needs more card draw, but then you're a- adding more cards to draw. <laughs> so. And think about how often the accessory slot is one you're worried about in anyone other than Ursula. I just think it's it's a really easy include. That's funny that you say that because one of my answers out at the accessory slot was actually the contest, the contested thing. Like that was almost the point of contention mm. for me. No oh boy. Um, so Nick, what's yours? Uh, so to, yeah, so um, I had a hard time coming up with these, but one of them because I was like, who do I play a lot? Roland. <laughs> what does Roland need? Sanity. Mm. So I was like, Holy Rosary and Roland, mm. a Holy Rolandsry. <laughs> um, gives him two extra no, sanity. No, I'm not giving you that one. Bumps his will. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> like it, it's it seems like a great fit, but at the same time, I do also love police badge. But mm. granted, police badge, uh, you can ditch itself to get those extra actions. Um, and rosary providing with that two extra sanity buff. It's a nice, uh, it's a nice halfway point, or it's a more utility um, version of what's the God? What's the neutral one that I never get? Elder Sign Amulet. Mm. Um, Mm. You know, and Rosary's a level zero. It only costs two. So that was the one thing that I thought of. was like, Roland could use something like that. But again, then you're just adding an asset that you then have to draw through four extra cards to get to because it's going to be at the bottom of your deck. I don't know. (laughs) I like how we're pre-bittered on this. (laughs) (laughs) So I was thinking, I thought about this just now, Sean, when you said, um, when you said uh, it gives you that deck draw like with lucky cigarette case would mm-hmm. you do your one combo card and then the four extras are just neutral skills so you can draw more cards uh, okay so i was actually I mean, just gonna suggest that when i get to one of my other things it's like okay <laughs> why not yeah. why not Watch is right i'm down with that especially because these days i rarely find space for them so exactly so then yeah. if you do double versatile, you're running two of every neutral skill and then your extra combo piece. <laughs> sure. I'm down I with mean, that. I think, I think if you I'm can at... find the one card you want and then the four other cards have some form of now draw a card, the right. neutral ones are the real low-hanging fruit there. Like, I feel like you're probably fine. Mm-hmm. But there are so many times, too, when just having the neutral skills is like well i guess i think i'm i have my mind on city of archives because of iron man coming up but like that yeah. one is when you're like why don't i have any neutral skills <laughs> or just in multiplayer in general like yeah I, is it's just kind of one of those taints of <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry I, I i did it and we just have to acknowledge it um <laughs> of true solo being the predominant way that i think a large part of the community plays the game those neutral like Think about Min. Like, you'll pack icons that you don't intend to use yourself just because you know you'll be able to throw them at someone else. So, I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm warming to versatile. Mm. That, that revelation alone has made me more excited for it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my first idea, there was actually a few I had for Rita. I think there are some interesting ones there. I was thinking of, like, Venturer for adding more to her bow. But... The one that's just more fun than anything is Dynamite Blast. <laughs> because she's so good at leaving behind swarms of enemies. Like, I love the idea of her running away and then tossing back Dynamite Blast. Um, yeah. And jumping from the explosion action movie style. You uh, and I came up with the same thing, because I did the same thing for Finn. I'm like, he always yeah. leaves a, 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 you know, a, a wake of exhausted enemies <laughs> <Yeah>. behind him. <laughs> <laughs> just toss it back. So, yeah, and Survivor, usually you're not too resource intensive, so I can see you're being able to pay for it, but, yeah. Uh, Sean, what's your second one? Uh, We're going to go, it's actually, I'm taking this straight off of my, um, uh, it's not on the show notes because I decided that Drawn to the Flame was already mentioned in the article. Sure. Apparently I'm just <laughs> Mr. Lohang Fruit today. Uh, I'm going to go with Elusive in Ursula. Hmm. Because... Elusive in anybody. Well, sure, yes. But <laughs> Ursula specifically, if I'm interpreting the, the interaction correctly, she moves, she can trigger her ability off of moving with Elusive, can she not? I would think so. I have to remember how Elusive is phrased, but I think so. I think that should be mm-hmm. cromulent. Everyone, type, type, type. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pulling it up in chat here. 
Disengage from each enemy, engage with you, and move to a revealed location with no enemies. Yeah, and Ursula is after you move to a location. So, yeah. yeah. It's not yeah. bolded, so it's not the move action. Oh, man, that would suck if it was the move action. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically not taboo compliant, but I feel like if you're buying versatile, it kind of, like, that. that's a down payment on the cost toward elusive, right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> that's how taboo works. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting one. Uh, Nick, what's your second? My second one was, uh, like we talked about, Dynamite oh, Blast right. for Finn. Um, just because, yeah, he's uh, that's one thing that I've realized playing him. Uh, he's probably the rogue that I've played the most now. I think he's probably uh, eked out ahead of Jenny for the most games logged. Um, but yeah, he just leaves a wake of enemies behind him uh, like nobody else. Uh, so I was like, that's the only thing that I can really think of is like Dynamite Blast would be great to just kind of like take care of one, two three if you're lucky but probably one or two enemies um when you're a location away uh but i also thought it'd be great for finn because his weakness literally pulls enemies towards him mm. so as long like if that if you can set it up <laughs> to where the weakness pulls a bunch of enemies towards you and then you can dynamite blast like that's even better like he has a built-in taunt like who doesn't love that <laughs> so I do like the idea of like a Home Alone Wendy with double lure and then a splash dynamite blast. <laughs> <laughs> that's if they make a John McClane, that's what it's going to be. <laughs> uh, my second one was knowledge is power for Safina. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. Like her being able to cut. Obviously, I was thinking of some kind of a vet for Safina, and knowledge is power would be good to let her get extra actions out of spells. Um, and the fact that she could paint and world that and use it even more, like, that could be ways for Baller. her to save actions and save charges and all that. So Love I like it. that idea a lot. And and as I mentioned, I don't know, maybe Safina, I'm, I'm not sure about that, but maybe Safina's one who wouldn't mind the higher deck size. I mean, she essentially draws three cards at the beginning of the game anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, and Sean, your last one. My last one uh, would be Hatchet Man in Silas. Mm. Can't normally take it. Figured that'd be uh, a cool little include. <laughs> Although, Nick, you stole most of my thunder in selling this one because in Silas, I'm like, well, just put three other or four other neutral skills in there. <laughs> <laughs> and Robert's your father's brother. <laughs> sure. Silas can't take Hatchet Man? No, it's practiced, not innate. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, Nick, did you have a third one? One just hit me. Um, yeah. I'm going to go back to that tree as well and say premonition in everybody. Oh, see, I I, <laughs> I was totally going to do that. I'm like, no, that's too, everyone would have. That's the lowest. Like, that. I had to dig that fruit out of the ground. <laughs> it was half a tree at this point. <laughs> uh, my last one, I'm not really convincing myself, but. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> I'm selling it hard. I was trying to think of what could help fa- out Father Mateo, particularly in solo. And I was thinking of, uh, okay, what is the problem? My problem with Mateo is like getting stuff out fast and having resources. So I was thinking maybe Lone Wolf, um, one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful resource card in solo. That could just keep generating stuff and then he could get out his, his spells and things. You don't think that Father Mateo needs to go talk with Joey the Rat? Oh, wait, is he only items? <laughs> it's only items, yeah. No. Oh, God, Joey sucks. He doesn't get that <laughs> that spells for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, I think there's... I'm just curious. I'm just excited to see what people in the community do with this card eventually mm-hmm. and trying it out. Someone's going to find something. Yeah, yeah, you're going to see some fun uh, decks at, like, Gen Con and stuff like that that are using Versatile to do all sorts of weird shit. Yeah, I feel like Standalone is going to be the place where, like, mm-hmm. Standalone Mark will probably oh. run Versatile. Mm. Because you're just, you're going to draw through him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Mark, actually, we didn't mention him earlier, but he's a good one for because of that card draw. He draws so much. Mm-hmm. Mm. What would you put in Mark? Uh, active Despot. Oh, wait, he can take that already. <laughs> That's what I like every like Mark has such a like stunning blow. Casey says in chat. Oh, sure. uh, knuckle. Th- no, no. 
Why? Why? He has no. access to better options. Yes, I know. Yeah. It's like, why, would I, why would I pay two experience to include a zero experience? Yeah, okay. No, I understand the depths of idiocy that I just displayed. It's fine. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think Mark Mark would spend the four on or the four on versatile and just throw in more cards that he would normally take. Like, <laughs> just five guardian cards. More option. Yeah. I mean, you joke, but yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> like, why not? Yeah, it's hard to like. Mark is pretty well contained. He just has his kit, and it's hard to think of stuff to add to it. But yeah, I, I will say, I think I think versatile is a pretty well balanced, well designed card. Like, when I first look at it, I was like, oh, this is going to let some bonkers things happen. Oh, plus five deck size. So, I, I think it's overall pretty well balanced. Um, all right. Moving on to the last article, the Cats of Ulthar. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Ulthar? Ulthar. Hey, guys, you, rem- you remember when I talked about how Stray Cat was getting upstaged, and I thought mm-hmm. it was a really really slick segue into the next article? This, mm. is, this is that one. This is that one that I tried. This was, and there's found. delayed gratification on that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, man. I uh, I have thoughts about these. Um, okay, so <laughs> this is a whole article. We Usually we do, don't get these, a whole article about just certain cards like it's not about an investigator about a scenario but this is about four cat cards we got and uh i don't remember whose turn it is i think it was nick who read last i believe so so let's have sean read miss doyle miss doyle the cat general of ulthar is a survivor asset level one three cost has a wild icon has the ally creature and dreamlands traits limit one per deck Forced, after Miss Doyle enters play, search your bonded cards for hope, zeal, and auger. Randomly choose one of the or sorry, randomly choose one to put into play and shuffle the other two into your deck. When Miss Doyle leaves play, find each of those assets, even if they're out of play, and remove them from the game. She has two health, two sanity, and of course takes up the ally slot. Mm. So obviously doesn't do anything by herself except soak. But what do the other things do? <laughs> Good question. Oh, and I should say these, I didn't mention, but these are all coming out in the Dream Eaters. So they are coming soon. Uh, So the first of the three bonded cats is Hope. One cost asset. Very cheap. That's good. Intellect and uh, combat traded. Ally creature in Dreamlands. Bonded. Miss Doyle. Fast. Forced. After Hope enters play, discard Zeal and Augur. So you can only have one in play. Uh, action, if hope is ready, exhaust or discard him, evade, attempt to evade with a base value, agility value of five. If you discard at hope, this test is automatically successful. Then you may shuffle hope into your deck to put zeal or auger into play from your discard pile. <laughs> Ooh, there's a lot going on there, but... <laughs> so... I'm just going to leap ahead. All, all of them have a similar yes. yeah, they're exhaust or discard the ability. ability. Yeah, mm-hmm. so Zeal is the combat version. Exact same thing except for combat. Um, and Augur is the intellect version. So, no oh, boots. There's such an interesting cadence, I think, to these cards. Mm. Because you discard them for the, the automatic success. And then you decide whether you're going to shuffle them in or put them to your discard pile. And then later ones can pull them from discard pile and like uh, i'm still trying to wrap my head around exactly how this engine works Mm-hmm. well <laughs> so it would seem yeah so you play miss doyle you get a random one so at that point you're not choosing and then the other ones are sitting in your deck so probably that initial one you're just exhausting exhausting using trying to use it as much as possible yeah it kind of stinks that you have to take you you have to get all three of them, and you can't choose two of the three, and then put one of those two randomly. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because if you're playing four player, chances are one of these. Although I guess automatic success is still nice. Like if you're if you're like for instance for our Iron Man, if Rita took Miss Doyle, which I'm planning to, yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. I was gonna say that you'd have no use for Augur, but at the mm-hmm. same time discard auger to get an automatic intellect test like that's not bad it's an action test so it's not you can't do it like in response to a, a treachery or something but or anything that requires an action to yeah do hmm i think zeal is the worst one right Ooh. fight 
just a, it's its own fight test is the important part mm-hmm. but to automatically like, succeed about, at, to automatically do one damage spend an action do a damage don't draw a token i mean that's it, is good it's good in certain good. circumstances yeah but i think it's less good than an automatic evade or an yeah. automatic invest i mean it also depends like i'm thinking playing rita a lot she gets like one damage from evading and if it's a two health enemy like so maybe you're doing one fight test at five without having to like spend resources for fire axe or something and then you evade to finish it off yeah i I think there's two kind of approaches that are going to like this one is the approach that's going to want to shuffle these around all the time um yeah that that just kind of wants a little bit of everything and wants to be versatile in a different way and then I think there's going to be the kind that they're really looking to shore up a certain stat, and then they're kind of looking to keep that ally in play just to have, like, say you're an Ashcan and you want to have access to a once per turn intellect five when Duke is exhausted or something like that. The dog, the dog and cat deck. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized that three, these three cats shore up all three of Patrice's weaknesses. Mm hmm. And they have discard play. Oh, that they do. Like this <laughs> yeah. is th- these are made for Patrice. Like they should release those. Oh on my the god, Zimbabwe. they should. <laughs> we should send Matt. Matt. Um, one of the re- this is like a niche case, but one of the reasons I'm hot on including this in Rita is for City of Archives, actually. Oh yeah, because there you, you have go. to deal with that low stats of the that body of you. Bullshit. Mm-hmm. Just to let Ooh, you yeah. boost stats okay. up to five. Yeah. You're bringing that and we're packing neutral skills with personal. <laughs> <laughs> Big thing that we haven't really touched on yet that I feel is important because you're going to spend XP on Miss Doyle and you're going to want her as an ally, but she is a one of. Yeah. And that's really important mm. for an ally. Oh, you want yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's kind of super important, that, actually. Yeah. If, that's true, yeah, of a lot of these bonded cards. Oh Are all the bonded cards limit one per deck so far? Yep. Yeah? So far, yeah. So far. Mm. And the other ones, it's not quite so bad because, what, the mirror takes up accessory mm-hmm. and the... Lexicon the is a hand. Lexicon takes up a hand. Ally slot is like, ugh. I either, like, I want to be digging for my two of ally or I want one already in play. And in either case, yeah. I, I don't know. Patrice doesn't care that it's limit one per deck at least. <laughs> probably not. Probably not. But others. But I think that's a, that's a bigger consideration than I initially thought when I saw this. Yeah. I guess it's just the question of like, are you looking to lean on these cards or is it just like a fun kind of not even just fun? Cause that's kind of making it sound like they're not that effective, but it, is it, a is it more of like a support thing or are you really looking to lean on it? Because maybe if you're looking to lean on it, then you got to put in calling in favors and that type of thing. I think Flair. Yeah, perhaps. I honestly think Patrice is the only one who could lean on this without rewriting the whole deck. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Flair would be good in Patrice anyway. That's true. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, these are, this is very cool design. Once again, like this, oh, I'm. S- I feel like I say that each cycle, I get excited again. But this Dream Eater stuff is just it's it's, it's weird, mad again. So I like it. <laughs> 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 like a whole set of cats. Like yeah, it does smell. It does smell a lot like that. <laughs> All right. I can't. I can't Cat wait person. for the the paleontologist ally that pulls three bonded dinosaurs. <laughs> God, please, or, just please. Or it's like an artifact sphere, and you have to set aside your separate dinosaur deck, and then <laughs> I would take that too. <laughs> that to draw a random one. Oh, Not man. a fan of Jurassic World, but yeah, Owen Grady, and then Delta Echo and Blue. That'd be that'd be fun. <laughs> All right, awesome. So that is finally through our news. Wow, mm-hmm. we're caught I'll catch up. you guys next time. Thanks for listening. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Only an hour oh, and a half Jesus. in. Okay, so uh, let's get to our main discussion topic. Like I said, we've got a ton of patron questions that uh, that were posed to us. We're going to start working through these. I expect that we're actually not going to get through all of them. We'll probably bank a few, but we'll see how it goes. So uh, if we don't answer your question yet, know that we are banking it and we will get to it the next Mm -hmm. time we do this. So thank you to everyone who sent your questions in. 
Ian, take us away. Okay, so the first one is from a uh, patron and also friend of the podcast, Morton Dahl. There's a few questions in here, so let's let's go question by question. So, well, I guess the first two are kind of together. So what do you think about the state of the card pool at this point in the game and going along with that? Are there any deck types you still feel are lacking some key pieces to work? For example, Dark Horse decks or Succeed by Two Rogue decks. Or are there some investigators that need cards to develop a more coherent identity? So basically it's like, are there any deck types or any investigators that we think need more development? Well, I'll get the low hanging, the Lola <laughs> hanging fruit out of the way. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so much ground fruit this episode. <laughs> Bunch of dirty bananas. <laughs> I, I have no idea at this point what they could put out for Lola aside New signatures. from replacement yeah, signatures. That's what it is, essentially. <laughs> but, she, but but she needs yeah. some. Um, I would, he brings up Carolyn in his question. I would like to see better upgrade, not better, but a wider variety of upgrade options for Carolyn. Mm. Because the lack of weapon upgrades means that her guardian selection is much more limited and even in that guardian selection, there's some there's some that you probably aren't even just going to want to take. And then she can take anything that heals horror. But that's, I mean, there's a lot that do that. But you can get all that stuff and still be only at like 25 to 30 experience. So then you start looking at like ally play and stuff like that. So I would just, I don't know. I think she was one that I kind of was like, all right. Like once I got to about that 25 experience mark, I was like, what next like mm -hmm. there wasn't a i'm so used to guardians getting to 49 experience and being like that's all i get like well i need like 70 you know what i mean and she just isn't so maybe yeah. that's maybe that's just my perception of that class but whatever yeah i do kind of playing carolyn and agnes two-handed like i kind of wish carolyn could pull a little more weight in combat with those xp cards i don't know what that would look like if it's not a weapon but maybe she's like probably like level sitting two them dynamite. down and having a, a <laughs> talk with them. <laughs> I do love dynamite in Carolyn. I love dynamite in Carolyn. Yeah, I'm actually I've I've been throwing that under her um, stick to the plan, so it's yes. on tap. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. A deck type that I need. This is kind of broad, but I solo mystic. Like a lot of people talk about needing that help to get things out. Like, I wish there was... I don't want an exact purple copy of Ever Vigilant, but I want something similar <laughs> that lets you get uh, Mystic Assets out faster, and that would help solo Mystics out a ton, I feel like. I don't know yeah, what that would look those like. Yeah, because those spells... But... Some of those spells, like, Shriveling, um, and isn't there a... Oh, no, Rite of Seeking is, like, four, isn't it? Like, that's your first turn. Yep. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have Quiche or, or Cage, like, that's your turn. It's right of seeking and then resource, resource, and then play shriveling next turn. Or, you know, like it really limits you. Yeah, I can, I can totally see that. I'm trying to think of deck. Okay. So first of all, I just want to put a shout out out there to those investigators that have a specific trait in their oh. deck building. Some, some of them have fared better mm -hmm. than others. Uh, Mark's doing pretty okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'd like to see we're, we've got another bluff for Mateo. So <laughs> another <laughs> one. We've doubled. <laughs> Hundred percent increase, and I, I'd also really like to see a few more tricks that uh, Rita couldn't take anyway with her innate survival yeah. yeah, definitely <laughs> ones that the only other... go along with her stats. Because <laughs> the only other trait focused one is Ursula, and she does not need more help. <laughs> like she's amazing, just because Yellow's amazing. She's amazing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, okay. So, so I just want to throw out dark. We've got a fair few things going on in survivor that, uh, deals with having no resources and we have, but one card that I'm aware of that deals with having no cards mm. in your hand. Maybe if we're, if we're counting Madame LeBlanche, we'll, we'll, we'll count her too, but what's the other card? I kind of, uh, it's the one where dude's looking down at the revolver and there's one shot. Oh, left. And I can't remember the name of last it. Last hope on the left. Last stand. I don't know. Yeah. Last, last chance. Hope on the left. <laughs> last chance. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I, I remember that now. That was the name of my death metal God, gospel Jesus band. Jesus Christ. All right. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> death metal gospel. I would actually listen to that. Yeah. <laughs> death metal, not Christian. Death metal gospel. <laughs> That's great. Try to listen. Um, listen in my head to what that sounds like. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, lots of angelic <laughs> choirs. God damn it! I forgot what I was going to say. Now. <laughs> Anyway, I was just saying that I, I'd like a a few more things that encourage survivors to run with no or low cards in their hand, because I think that's kind of another do more with less area that hasn't really been right. tapped yet. Uh, oh, I remember. It was he's, he brought up Succeed by Two Rogue. Mm-hmm. Uh, does anybody run that anymore? Like, I tried, but uh, then we got... I mean, I run Cigarette Yeah, guys. that's what I mean. Like, yeah, like, like I tried to do Succeed by Two. Like, I tried to make a daring maneuver deck work, essentially. Um, and that was before we got a couple other of the newer tools for it. But then, like, the other versions of Rogue were either more interesting or more fun. Like, action-heavy Rogue or, like, the whole Preston, like, money Rogue is so fun. Yeah. I, so. I think there's probably enough to make a decent deck. It's just similar to you, Nick. I've just been enamored with other Rogue builds, so I haven't really yeah. experimented with it much. Because builds that can't be taken apart by the chaos bag tend to be more enjoyable. <laughs> In general. This is true. Just, just throwing that out there. Okay, his next question was, if you feel there are no niches that need fill- filling. Well, it sounds like we did. <laughs> um, but I guess kind of the summary of his remaining questions are, is there enough design? Do we feel like there's enough design space in the game to generate new archetypes now? Um like, is there uh, new I've, stuff that could be done? I think so. I think that that's proven every cycle. I think every mm-hmm. cycle we've seen a pretty good shakeup from what the established norm was. Like, with uh, with Dunwich, we saw the level zero. Like, we saw that, okay, not it's not going to be main class, off class. It's going to be different deck building rules for everybody. And then in Carcosa, we saw um, Lola, who, you know... Eh, didn't really pan out but we tried and <laughs> yeah, yeah. Try. It was, it was, it was but made. then like min like the idea of having an investigator that sits in one spot and is still super effective and helps everybody out even though she never moves like that's that's amazing um and then you know like every cycle we've seen a new shakeup um in just what we expect either from a class or just from an investigator or from the roles like what the roles mean to be like a, a clover or whatever so I think there's definitely a lot of design space here still. Yeah, if there's a designer that I have faith in to come up with new weird stuff, um, I definitely have faith that Matt can do that. Like yeah. with the with the bonded cards <laughs> that we're getting that mm-hmm. add some interesting tweaks. Um, we got the dual class cards, which maybe we'll see some more of that in the future. But yeah, I, I think there's definitely... Uh, it's always hard to speculate and think of what new uh is gonna come but yeah i think there's like it's all gonna be variations on doing the same thing because that's what you're doing in this game getting clues fighting etc but i think there's a, a good amount of ways we haven't explored yet to do those same things if i know anything about matt he likes cats he's probably <laughs> he's probably yes <laughs> But he's probably actually batting ideas away because they're too creative (laughs) rather than the other problem existing. I think once we get a motorcycle player card, that's when I'll be like, I think we're done. (laughs) (laughs) We caught it all. We've we've hit the pinnacle of Arkham Horror card game. Thanks for playing. (laughs) We need one more vehicle cycle. (laughs) Tommy Muldoon will jump the shark. (laughs) Jump the it'll jump the show off. <laughs> okay. Um. Next qu- couple of questions from from our patron Starking one seventy seven. Uh. First question. Uh. This should be a simple one to answer. What was the biggest blob event at Gen Con? If you guys <laughs> know. <laughs> oh. I, the biggest I think, blob I think event. He means like okay, player count. I thought yeah. he was asking. Yes, damn it. <laughs> that would be... I, I thought he was asking a different question, which I'm going to answer sure. after we're done with the action. <laughs> that would be the, the Sunday event, was which was 96? Is that right? Around there, yeah. 90-something. Yeah. So far as I know, that's the biggest blob event that has yet occurred on the planet so far. <laughs> we'll see if anyone beats that. And second <laughs> question, do you hope to be a part of the biggest blob event at Arkham Knights 2019? Um, mm, nah. <laughs> is that a serious answer or i'm okay i'm okay not like i played blob twice at gen con 
I don't think playing it again with triple the player count is going to be, is going, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think that's, that's, that doesn't excite me enough to be like, yeah, I better make sure I sit down to play that. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, I definitely want to play Blob again because I like the scenario and want to play it in a group. Um, I think I'm similar in that I'm not necessarily like, I have to be part of the biggest event. Like, I think it's cool it exists, but I think I'm fine just playing the Blob in general. My main question is, is it on Sunday? <laughs> Because that's literally the only time I have. Free. Yeah, I there's think, that too. <laughs> that's the nice. real question. <laughs> we'll schedule permit that. Yeah, <laughs> so we'll see. Um, all right, Sean. I know you've been holding it in. <laughs> oh, now tell us, tell the story again. So, 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 so the question I was hoping he was asking is, what was the biggest blob? Thirty-two. Thirty-two. <laughs> I've yet to know of anyone who's beat a bigger blob than thirty-two. Okay, that's all. We'll see if anyone beats that at Arkham Knights. <laughs> yeah. But although I don't know if anyone can draw reality acid as many times as Sean in a single game, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> I don't Dear think God. it's possible. There's always a certain treachery that like gloms onto Sean. Like last year, I think it was <laughs> what was it in the Egypt scenario? It was yeah, eclipse. eclipse. Mm. Like it was eclipse. Like, <laughs> My gym drew eclipse like six <laughs> times, and there's four copies in the deck. Just Figure that out. Staring at the eclipse over and over again until his eyes burned out. <laughs> Jim, close your eyes. <laughs> Jim, close your eyes. <laughs> there's this really stupid Brendan Fraser, Elizabeth Hurley comedy from a while back. What is it called? Oh, you mean yes, bedazzled? bedazzled. Oh There's this God. scene me and my, one of my friends always laughed at so hard where he's staring at the sunset <laughs> yes, and crying. The sunset. <laughs> That's what that reminds me of every time. <laughs> Oh god, yeah. the tag on the end of that scene where he like makes this big speech and then he looks behind him and he's like, oh, that's that damn son again! And he uh, starts crying. Sean, I love you oh. for knowing that reference. <laughs> I am always so good for the dazzled <laughs> reference. What a weird thing to say on an Arkham uh. Horror podcast. <laughs> Alright, well, yes. I'm glad we have that moment together. And I'm sure there's like three listeners out there who are like, yes! You guys got We're it. We're going to be screening Bedazzled at <laughs> Tentacle Time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, next Patreon question from Captain Squally. How did you guys... Ooh, this is uh, taking us back. How did you guys settle on which investigator roles you would represent on the podcast? For example, Ian equals Rogue, Scott equals Survivor, Sean equals Magical Girls. <laughs> uh Get to rights. I was gonna say, I think it's cute that he felt like he had to describe, like, define who is who. But then Sean's made it appropriate. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do any of you now identify with or enjoy another class more than the one you initially picked? Uh, so, first question: How did we settle on those rules? Um, I planted my flag pretty early because <laughs> I think it was the first or second article about Arkham released or showed off the shotgun and i was like well found my home <laughs> and that yeah that was that was an easy sell for me um similarly i pretty much was attracted to rogue right away like in most rpg video games i'll usually play rogue first as the class like i like that sneaky evade type and then once i saw the whole mechanic of gambling type effects it just appeals to me as a player i love like when it, you're putting everything on the line and it can either go terribly or well so i think that's why rogue appealed to me right away well my fascination with magical <laughs> girls started at at the ripe age of well, like whenever the x-men animated mm. series came out 90 something storm storm has always been my mm. favorite x-man she's a good one um that, that, that was my first like sorcerer girl crush if I'm going to trace it back. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm always attracted to casters. In MMOs, I tend to play kind of support healer type casters. But when, when I'm playing DPS, I love a good warlock. Um, and it's purple, which is not only my favorite color, is objectively the best color. Look at I up. mean, that's, you know, blue's also my favorite color. So that was a nice coincidence. <laughs> it helps. It helps. I haven't traditionally said green was my favorite color, but I did, <laughs> like, around the same time discover, like, 
that I was destined to be a Slytherin, and that was green. Mm. And Grima <laughs> from Wormtongue is in the green Surprising sphere. So nobody. Like I have very much embraced green these days. So yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, kind of going along, we'll roll another patron question into this because it, it goes along with this. Uh, Mighty Jim was asking, "Why is there no seeker on the team, or was that Tom? That was indeed Tom. Tom was our seeker." Mm. Mm. Uh, yep. He latched onto Daisy pretty early. Um, mm-hmm. Really liked the yep. yellow cards that were shown off. And I know Scott has talked about maybe like becoming the official seeker since Tom is uh, busy doing like actual <laughs> adult stuff. Um, and yeah, he's threatened like five times, but he's yet to pull the trigger on. It. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think Scott also does just. I mean, we, everybody knows he likes Seeker, but he also does like Survivor a lot too, so. Mm-hmm. So the uh, second question, do any of you now identify with another class more? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, still, I still lean heavily Seeker. Mm-hmm. I've, I've said it before, like, blue-yellow is my favorite combination in this game, and the fact that the very first investigator that I played was that. Um, that, like, it's, but I'm still Guardian at heart. So I will always be a Roland, not a Joe. <laughs> I would say as far as like my, my want for support archetypes in multiplayer games, I, I would say, you know, Guardian is something that I tend to play a lot, which is why it was pretty great that Diana came out as a <laughs> Look at <of> us! <laughs> <laughs> I am definitely rogue at heart and will probably always remain that way, but I will admit to being heavily, heavily tempted by Survivor. Um... My favorite investigator in the core was not Skids, but Wendy. Uh, but been no secret mm-hmm. about how much I liked Wendy. And uh, Rita now is probably one of my favorite investigators. And so they're really tempting me hard because uh, Survivor is the other class that has the kind of evade thing going on. Um, and I just like the whole... They are the the class more than any that just has the weird mechanics for the investigators. So... That tempts me a little bit. Yeah, we haven't had a straight up main class rogue off class survivor yet, have we? We've only had like weird mixes. Right. Yeah. That's correct. Mm. Finn is the closest, but we can only pick the the five. Yeah. Matt, get on that. Make an investigator for Ian. You got Sean and I. <laughs> I guess I guess technically Jenny could take five red cards, sure, that's, but uh, no. <laughs> No, uh, seven with versatile. <laughs> hey, listeners, it's Scott. I wasn't on this episode, but while I was editing it, I was also doing what you were doing right now, which is screaming at your audio playing device when these bozos forgot that Preston exists. It's not like he just came out in the last deluxe box or anything. Anyways, I lambasted them in our private chat, so don't you worry. Continuing on. Okay, uh, next patron question from Maka. Do you think any other card should be added to the taboo list? Hmm. If so, how would you restrict slash mutate them to bring them back in line with other cards? I think... Rex. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I think the meta's okay. Mm. If I was going to point a finger anywhere, it would be drawing thin. Mm. Mm-hmm. But I don't, I'm not convinced it needs it to the level that the other things that have been mutated... Needed. What about what about putting one experience on premonition? <laughs> Why though? Bec- I think the I think the point of the taboo list is when there's a card that goes in every investigator that can take it. That's when you mm. look at it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like when the when it mm-hmm. becomes no longer a choice, and that's why Machete got mutated. That's why Milan got mutated. Sure, but I I would argue that indeed that is something they should be looking at. But things like Milan and Machete go in every deck, and they just have a profound impact over the entire course of the game that they're in. Sure, Premonition mm-hmm. is great, very splashable. It's still only doing one test sure. for you. I think okay. it's fine. I'm curious as a side note, like is the rest of the community in with the Premonition love like we are, or is this like a Mythos Busters <laughs> obsession? <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> uh, the one card that jumps to mind that's like in that same cat- category is the Milans and the Rexes that didn't get hit is probably uh, Peter, big man on campus. Mm. Mm. I'm not convinced that it needs it, but if I'm trying yeah. to think of a card that wasn't hit that is on that same power level. But at the same time, we have that new survivor ally 
who is the same thing, but for um, for damage. Mm -hmm. And we see how she operates, and it's kind of like, oh. She's the balanced mm, version. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe Matt has learned. You know, <laughs> or like maybe they see, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't, I would agree that I don't think Peter needs it, but at the same time, a newer version that's very similar came out, you know, so. Peter's powerful, but he doesn't win the game for you. Like, he's just the best defensive ally yeah, he prevents that you can you from concoct. Losing. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're Agnes, I guess, then he kind of mm. wins. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like the taboo list. I don't think anything else is yeah, really I on that like level. Yeah, I feel like the taboo list was pretty surgical. It hit the cards that really need to be hit. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm, and I haven't played with the newer cards enough to to really have a strong opinion one way or the other. Um, okay, Maka's second question was, <laughs> on a totally different note, what is the proper alcohol pairing for each investigator class? <laughs> mm. oh, Scotch boy. for guardian. Sure. Moonshine for survivor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like the dirtiest of moonshine. <laughs> yeah, like the... <laughs> like rough moonshine. Um, rogue... Uh, I want to say, like, Jack Daniels. Yeah, yeah some kind of whiskey. whiskey for Rogue. Some kind of sour yeah. mash. And wine for Too Seekers. <laughs> like a, like and a, absinthe yeah. for Mystics. I, yeah. yeah, and Absinthe, yeah. I, I'm down with that. That works. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When... I wanted to throw a Long Island iced tea in there somewhere, but I... Mm. Lola. <laughs> <laughs> sure. When Just get her drunk. One day we'll have a class sampler <laughs> that has all of those <laughs> alcohol. <laughs> Um, okay, Brandon is our next question, and Brandon's question is, what is, by unanimous agreement of the hosts, oh boy, we'll see if that's possible, the Mythos Buster podcast favorite scenario? Mm. Can I, can I guess, before any discussion is had, can I guess? Sure. <laughs> I'm just going to say one, and if we can all agree on it. I know, I was about to say, you're kind of holding the conversation just <laughs> And by now I've already forgotten unquote, the guessing. name of it. Um... <laughs> God damn it. It's a real favorite. Oh, I'm going to go out the on a limb good. and say... Hmm. It's definitely in the conversation for me. Okay, so let's nail down a loose top yeah. five. Well, we already did our top three episode. <laughs> right, but things have come Wait, up Wait, are you saying then. top five for all of... Oh, like shared. Okay, yeah, great. Right. Greater good's in there. Okay, greater so good. like... Mm -hmm. Greater good's in there. Okay, so I'm just going not necessarily based on my own personal favorites, but just the mm -hmm. ones I hear people talking about. Well, not people, the ones I hear us. us yeah, yeah, about. there you go, there you go. Depths of Yoth? Yes. Yes. Threads of Fate? Yes. Yes. Uh, Midnight This is where it gets tricky. This is where it gets tricky. <laughs> yeah, after that, it's... Uh, uh, I don't know if I'd put Midnight I... Mass there. Yeah. It's uh, it's partially because I haven't played it in so long, honestly. Okay, how about Ruguru? I love yeah, Ruguru. That, that'd be in the conversation for me. Okay, okay. Um... Uh, a consternation on the constellation. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think we found it. Damn it, that's what I should have said when I said, "Let me guess." Oh, Jake says, "What about the return to stuff?" Oh, fuck that! I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Him. I don't know him well enough. We're not going to open can't. that can of worms. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hmm. I'm trying to um, think among the, other campaigns, what are the what are the standouts? And I'm looking at the standalones, like the. The event scenarios have all been yeah, Essex, yeah, nice one, Casey. <laughs> um, this the event ones have all been Casey and I had actually had a discussion about this a little while ago about how the special event scenarios were very like like the only ones that actually felt like a regular scenario were um, the the Egyptian ones, the Abyss ones, <laughs> and I think those are a little too higher on the difficulty scale for me to put as a favorite because right. it's not one I can just slot into a campaign because when I've tried doing that, they have just slaughtered me. Mm -hmm. They are um, pretty brutal. Yeah, and that was when I played solo primarily. Um, I do a lot of two-handed now. Um, but uh, And then, like, L Labyrinths was amazing, but we've already talked about that not having legs. Like, that was that was an event that you had to be there for. You know what I mean? Playing Labyrinths that first couple times versus playing it at home, or it's totally different. Like, it loses so much. And Blob was a lot of fun, but I don't think it's a top fiver. So, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I think I remember a lot of us saying Pallid Mask was up there for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, no matter what, like, we've got our top three. Yeah, that's true. Because we, we had to think about the other ones. Yep. Okay, so between those three... Ruguru. I... 
I'm kidding. <laughs> Thank you. I still have to throw down for Depths of Yoth. As favorite of all time. Yep. At this point in the game. I do, you know, yeah, because Threads of Fate does, in my opinion, it relies on the campaign around it more than Depths of Yoth does. Sure. Um, and that at least is a criteria for me. And I mean, we're doing us we're doing a whole event around Depths of Yoth, so that'd be a pretty mm-hmm. safe bet, wouldn't yeah. it? Mm-hmm. I do really like for the greater good, but like Depths has been out longer. I think I need to age mm-hmm. for the greater good a little bit more to yeah. really see how it holds up. So yeah, I'm. Well, I, they kind of have like different kinds of replayability, yeah. but yeah. I, Depths is just so dynamic and fun. It's mm-hmm, like every mm-hmm. time you reset that depth, it's like, oh boy, here we go again. Because it's it's, it's yeah. a roguelike. Yeah, because yeah, exactly. it's like, let's do another run. Okay, second run, third run. Like yeah. you're just resetting and keep doing it. Yeah. Okay, I'm fine with that. Unanimous. Yeah. Depths of Yacht. I would agree. <laughs> Woo. Mythos Buster Glad seal of there. approval. What's our least favorite? Oh. <laughs> Essex. Is it Essex? Really? Uh, uh, no, it's probably Boundary Beyond. That would probably be the podcast least favorite. Yeah, I would say that's probably the podcast least favorite. Mm-hmm. I think I like I think I like Boundary better than Heart, just because Heart just felt bland, whereas yeah. Boundary felt unfair, but it was still interesting. No. You know, but yeah, I think for the podcast, I think <laughs> yeah. we have to give it to Boundary. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, it gave us an entire episode, Bitch Fest of bit, wait, Bitch Fest twenty eighteen. Yeah, that <laughs> was Fest no, that was um, where Doom awaits. That no. was Moanfest. That was Moanfest, yeah. Mm-hmm. Really? No, no, never mind. That was Salty that was, by no, Nature. That was Salty by Nature. Oh, right. yeah, that's right. That's right. Salty by Nature. Okay. <clears throat> Next patron question from Archer Av. Oh, this is going to be a tough one. I don't know if I know the answer to this. If you were Investigator, what would your Elder Sign ability be? Okay, you can't say it for yourself. Okay. Oh, God damn it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> uh okay let's do sean first then okay um, hmm. uh, all right so he gets pissy <laughs> I, had an, um, I had an idea for this and it involves and me he, getting pissy and oh my god if it were scott i'd have the perfect one because it fits his class and it fits his personality but he's not here god damn it um all right okay uh so it's an elder sign yeah because I so wanted it to be action. like if stuff was going badly, but then it's an elder sign ability. Right. If you pull the elder sign, you. <laughs> we we could make one to troll him that shuffles the discard pile <laughs> encounter discard pile <laughs> to the encounter. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. My favorite effect. <laughs> That's good. Plus one. Oh no! I keep think I keep wanting to go like the mystic route. And yeah, sorry, Casey. I know it did kind of kill the discussion, didn't it, by saying we can't do ourselves. All right, fine, Sean. What would you make yours? Plus two, if you succeed, heal a horror. Oh, boo! It's so boring. No, I mean, come on, come on. Like when things go well, I, I rally and I stop being pissy. I... <laughs> okay. So it's the okay. Fine. <laughs> we'll go there. Um, all right, Nick. I have no clue. <laughs> Plus two, okay. if it's an attack, deal of damage. <laughs> oh, come on now. Uh, we can do better than that. If you are using shotgun. <laughs> so for Scott's, I was going to say, because I, I get on about reusing jokes. Mm. So for Scott's, I was going to have it be plus, plus X, where X is the large or the highest quantity of, or the... The most copies of a single event in your discard pile. If this mm. test is su- if this test is successful, return one of those events to your hand. <laughs> I like it. It fits Survivor and it fits Scott. Yep, I dig. I dig. Um, okay, Nick, huh. Guardian, and Off Class Seeker. Dave's got me giving me a weakness now. <laughs> Pissy fit, <laughs> which is just a fun thing to say. Um, okay. Uh, you are going to shuffle two random cards from your hand. Uh, so plus two, if you succeed, shuffle two random cards from your hand into your deck and draw three cards. Okay. Hmm. Wait, two random from my hand? Yep. Ooh, okay. I think I was going to do something boring, like adding ammo to a fire. <laughs> <laughs> uh. And Ian, you automatically succeed. Place a doom on the nearest cultist in play. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I like the Grima shout out, so I will, I will allow it. <laughs> I like that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Mine should be plus two, and then you gain resources equal to the damage you deal from this test. Oh, there you go. Okay. So it fits with shotgun. <laughs> okay. oh, that would just be an avalanche okay. of coins. <laughs> right? <laughs> Move over, Tommy. I'm just, uh, whatever. <laughs> Okay, uh, I think we have a time for a few more here. Um, okay, next question from the Black Horror, Jesse. Uh, if you were an investigator, which one would you be? I thought, well, um... <laughs> if I was one, uh... Well, I'd wear a hood. <laughs> so you would be Diana. And probably I, walk around with a candle. I would, I would... Well, okay. Because I'm not much of a fighter in actual, like, if it were, mm-hmm. like, if we're going about what we like, I would definitely be Roland, hands down, obviously. But yeah, I think I'd have to go with Jake. I'm probably Lola. <laughs> 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 or who's the writer? Who's the writer? No, they're not an investigator. Gloria? Yet, they? Yeah, Gloria's not an investigator yet. Never mind. I'd probably be fucking Lola. <laughs> I, um, hmm. Ian. I think I would honestly closest probably be like Mandy or something, a researcher, <laughs> just mm. something boring like that. Yeah. Don't you work in education? I do. Yeah. Norman. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I don't know. Sounds about right. It'd be one of the seekers, probably. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah. Casey says I'm notoriously arthritic. <laughs> okay um continuing with this similar line of question delarp guy josh asks us to play shag marry and kill with the dream eaters gators (laughs) i don't even know who's all in that i gotta look Uh, that up it's tommy so you put a ring on patrice's finger asap right yeah she's definitely my mary she's Uh, just gonna discard it (laughs) (laughs) so nick there's tommy there's mandy Luke and who? No, just non weakness cards. Nick, just non weakness. <laughs> <laughs> who am I um, forgetting? Who's the. Oh, Tony. Martin. Tony. Yeah. Wouldn't you want to marry Tommy because he's the one who's going to be out for your back? Like, he's going he's gonna to watch your back. He's going to take care of you. Or he's going to profit off your life. Death. <laughs> but you, that frees you up to do the thrilling shit. <laughs> yeah, but things have a tendency of just getting hurt around him. So kill. kill. I think I think killing? Patrice is killing? shag. Mm. Yeah, because she 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 lives the like the fun lifestyle that's all over the place. She's cursed, so you don't want to be hanging around that for long. And then Tony's kill, just because it has to be someone else. Like you need to fill that slot. So okay. Wait, do we yeah. have another one? Do we have another? Is there a mystic one? No, we don't have mystic yet. Yeah, Luke, Luke, Luke. Oh, I'm looking at Arkham yeah, DB, and so... he's not on there. So I'm gonna go shag Luke because he's he's kind of the the investigator that has got some really weird things going on. Yeah. I don't know how often you're gonna want to play him, but like when you do, you're gonna want it to be like intense and fun. Yeah, I was kind of thinking shag for Luke as well. I'm on that same page. Mary Patrice shag Luke. Like he's probably kind of flaky, uh, like doing all this r- weird dream stuff. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Casey, yeah. <laughs> Luke wears a mask like eyes wide shut. <laughs> <laughs> oh no oh no <laughs> it's pretty much exactly like that <laughs> um, and then uh kill tony because he's cool but boring hmm i don't think he's gonna be boring at all but i think I'll, but i would agree kill tony i'm probably gonna kill tommy i think i don't trust him God damn. <laughs> well, he's, he's just gonna deflect the blow to his guard dog <laughs> sure Gain three He's gonna deflect his blow to me because I married him. <laughs> uh, okay, what do we think? One more question? Two um, more? Yeah, I feel like we can take a couple more. Okay, let's do one or two more. Uh, question from Nate: What aspect of the mythos do you want the Arkham LCG to explore next? I'm getting the feeling mm. Ames myth is around the corner. Okay, so, so I know exp- this is a super basic answer, but God damn it, just give me Cthulhu, please. so i was gonna say explore next is a weird question if it was just explore that's easy because that's just pick whatever you like Mm. but thinking about the dream eaters Mm -hmm. and how bizarre that's going to be and how it's too many campaigns and how the cards we're seeing are just crazy like i kind of want it to be a little bit more of a 
a return to normalcy. Yeah. Like almost like a Dunwich type thing. More grounded and yeah. real world. Yeah. So I, th- I think a, I think a Cthulhu related one could be interesting. Um, I think Mountains of Madness would be really cool. Uh, but yeah, I don't, as far as like following Dream Eaters, that, that's where I get a little, a little more. I, you could definitely rope Innsmouth into a Cthulhu like that. They're one and the same, essentially. Like they fit that same, they live in the same corner of the mythos. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I, I think it would be a good time to get Innsmouth. And I'm just hoping we get some boat action going, some sailing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of some kind. That would be my big wish for it. Um, that would be a lot of fun. As far as any other aspects of the mythos, uh, I mean, we're getting Dreamlands. Dreamlands have yeah, always been cool. Yeah, they've honestly kind of hit my big ones. Like, Carcosa is a yeah. huge one. Oh, Carcosa, And yeah. Dreamlands. Um, the cult... Nile Afetep would be really sweet. Mm-hmm. I know we he was touched on with the Abyss scenarios, but I would love to have a, a campaign centered around him. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, the some of the board games, like Mansions and now Arkham 3rd Edition, are tapping into the gang war stuff. Like, we got a little mm-hmm. bit with the Obanions and Dunwich, but... I wouldn't yeah. mind seeing that expanded upon in, in uh, like a cycle where you're like having to choose who to make alliances with and that kind of thing. That could be cool. Right. Um, okay. Next question. Maybe this will be our last one for, uh, oh, this is also from Chris Maka. Um, oh boy. If Matt, <laughs> because this is, might be a tough one. If Matt gave you an opportunity to redo an existing investigator, stats, abilities, deck building signatures, who... Besides Lola, key question, <laughs> uh, would you choose and why? So, which gator other than Lola? He uh, took away our Lola. ant ridden mm-hmm. in the ground, yeah, low hanging exactly. fruit. We turned around and the tree is bare now. <laughs> I would love to take another swing at the core set signatures. Most of them. Some mm. of them are fine. That's not the question. Roll it. Yeah, yeah it is. The investigator. So, oh, like, signatures. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Agnes, for instance, I think she's Literally got a really right cool there. ability. I think Agnes and Daisy just have really boring and very unusable signatures. See, and I was going to go the Elder Sign route. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And say Roland's mm-hmm. Elder Sign, Agnes's sure. Elder Sign. Anyone who has just... a plus X. Where yes. X is. Honest, yeah. honest <laughs> to God, if I, if I could rewrite every just plus X, yes. yeah. I would love it. Mm-hmm. Like, I know that's more difficult, and you're going to run out of effects eventually, but it's just so boring. It just Give me m- something else. It just makes such a difference, like, the investigators <laughs> yeah. that have that cool Elder Sign ability. I mean, like, with Roland, it may as well be blank. Mm. Right, because, I mean, the thing with the Elder Sign, and we've discussed this ad nauseum, I'm sure, but the chances you're going to see it anyway are gross. Mm-hmm. And the chances you're going to see it in the moment you really need that one specifically are even worse. So the times when you see it like, oh, is, this was just a random investigate test or, I don't know, it was a test on a treachery that I didn't plan or just it's just like having the extra effects when you succeed or just when you pull it, like that's really what makes it work. The the plus X are just ugh. The one I might take a swing at is Father Mateo maybe. Like I like a lot about his design. I like the extra XP. The, the once per game miracle is cool. Um, but I'm just wondering if there was a way to add a little bit more flavor to him so he doesn't seem like a <clears throat> a vanilla mystic that has a once per game ability. Yeah, Which, yeah, there is. Yeah, absolutely it's, is. It's ditch blessed and give him seeker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it would have to be something in the deck building. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's I think that's what's holding him back. Mm-hmm. Like, also, I think. I think Norman should be able to take like at least up to like level three miskatonic traded things because the fact that the astronomy professor cannot take higher ed is a crime. <laughs> yeah, he went to community college. His, his degree is <laughs> fake. It's a big scandal. <laughs> That's what he's so paranoid about. Um. All right. So I think. For time's sake, we will reserve the rest of these questions for a future episode. Except for this last one from Christopher. What is your TFA Iron Man step-by-step plan? And will you share your dozens of spreadsheets and notes for it? (laughs) Uh, The answer will be coming on the next episode where we our main discussion topic is going to be our Iron Man prep episode for for 
anyone who wants to hear our thoughts on TFA, breaking it down, what our plan for Iron Man is going to be, that's going to be episode 69. <laughs> yeah, that will be the big peak beneath the robes, <laughs> behind the curtain. <laughs> oh, all will be all snakes, will be all snakes. <laughs> We're on a list now. <laughs> uh, yes. Okay, so then, guys, let's move it on into a little bit of tentacle time. Ian, what has been grabbing your time lately? Uh, okay, a couple things, both somewhat quick. Um, first is, I've been mostly playing Arkham, but I've been bringing out another game that I got a while back, Deep Space D6. It is a solo-only kind of dice-rolling game where you're controlling a spaceship, and like it's just wave after wave of... Uh, different enemies coming at you and then the device of the dice sorry have different like icons on it like tactical and science and engineering and you assign those to different stations on your ship and they do things like fire weapons and repair your ship so um very dice chucky game like a light game so i like it as filler when i only have a certain like small amount of time but i want to unwind with a game and uh you know, not like super strategic because there's a lot of randomness involved with the dice, but still there's some decisions to be made and it's fun. So that is one. The uh, I'm getting, just looking at this image, I'm getting vibes of FTL mm-hmm. combined with Tharsis. I don't know Tharsis, you... but I do Tharsis know is a Tharsis is a, it's a pretty simple PS4 game. Mm. Um, or is it PS3? I can't remember now which system I bought it on. But uh, I played it a lot, and it's just you're on a ship that's going to Mars, and uh, it's just it's throwing dice and solving complications and problems just on that on that trip. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's really fun. Um, anyway, continue. Yeah, yeah, I think it's very heavily influenced by that kind of genre. It started out as a print and play, from what I know, and then they moved it to you can order it. Um, and uh, I'm kind of uh, one of the reasons I was playing it too is just designing kind of I'm currently designing a space focus game so I like seeing what's out there and just seeing what other people are doing um, and then the other thing is just today I downloaded a demo of a game uh, this is a video game called Crying Sons uh, this is a rogue light in space another space game um so kind of along the same vein of an f uh ftl um but this one has a bit more story in it so you're kind of waking up in this your uh, admiral on this imperial navy you wake up and you're you've been woken uh because things have gone wrong and so the game is like exploring further and further to try to figure out what's gone wrong Um, But the combat is was quickly becoming addictive for me because it's cool because it's kind of Battlestar Galactica style and that you're controlling this battle cruiser. But a lot of the strategy is picking like what kind of fighters you're going to deploy. And it's kind of like rock, paper, scissor, like the fighters are good against drones, but the drones are good against frigates and the frigates are good against drones and uh i don't know and you like you have these big guns on the battle cruiser but you they have like a long cooldown time so you really got to pick like are you gonna waste them on taking out the other enemy fighters are you gonna attack their battle cruiser so uh in my short time playing it was a lot of fun so i'm looking forward to digging more into that one this image that i found Mm -hmm. is giving me feelings (laughs) feelings <laughs> yeah. i love this it, it's like it's this really is fun. amazing yeah. yeah show us on the doll where the game touches <laughs> oh, everywhere from here down um is this is this uh pc is it mm-hmm. console uh pc i'm not sure if it's on console i downloaded it off okay. steam but yeah and it, nick what you been up it, to uh so oh, sorry, sorry go ahead, yeah it's a kind of a, a indie game so it's not like very mm. uh hardware intensive which is nice um for me uh, a lot of rp surprising nobody <laughs> rpgs up the wazoo um i say it i say it every so often but i'm just shocked at how much i am getting now whereas to think like five years ago four years ago even what year is it now 2019 even like three years ago it was like i was not getting any role playing but then i was just like hey let's try it online and now suddenly i'm getting it more than i know what to do with um so 
We started our uh, our third now seasonal RPG campaign um, set in the uh, space fantasy universe of my book series, the Astral Tides universe. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've had one session. Our second session is tomorrow night. Um, really excited about that. It's it's great because it's helped me a lot with world building with this uh, set with this setting. Um, there's like I always had the setting developed, but it was always developed to just be like a step beyond what you can what you read in the books, um, just for like contextual sake. And then developing for an RPG has been uh, like I'm like oh now I need reasons for all this stuff <laughs> and I need more than just what they see. And it's there's. There's been a lot that's come out from that, uh, which is really cool. And the characters are awesome, and I'm very happy with how that first session went. This is a totally original system because I'm <laughs> because I'm smart, and I decided to just build a system rather than adapt. <laughs> um, but it's a totally original system, and I'm actually very pleased with how it how it went during the first session. Obviously, some of that stuff's going to change, and we're going to hit stuff that was designed poorly or stuff that needs to be fixed. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm very happy with where it's going so far. And, uh, um, oh, Miris, yes, my D&D campaign um, is still ongoing, but we've announced recently, uh, just in the last couple of weeks, that we plan, the DMs plan to uh, finish Miris, bring it to a close by the end of 2019, maybe into early January, depending on how that goes. So um, we've kind of moved away from the West Marches format for this finale in order to ensure that we get a, a satisfying climax to this campaign that's been going on for almost a year now. Um, it's a little bittersweet uh, to be closing this out. It's obviously earlier than I had originally expected, earlier than I'd hoped. Um, but at the same time, I will be happy to have that that the brain space that Miris has taken up, which is a lot because <laughs> Miris is quite the machine. That well, I'm sorry, um, what's what's Miris? M- <laughs> Miris is the <laughs> yeah exactly um, yeah. So uh, it'll be nice to have that brain space back, to have that free time back. And uh, Stokes says more Astral Tides time. And yeah, that's probably what's going to happen is, is there will be a greater focus on that. So yeah, I'm um, sad to see Miris closing, but also at the same time excited to get the PCs that are in Miris to that end game content. Oh, don't even... Oh, Casey said we're planning Miris too. Don't even start. Like, I, I want to do another West Marches at some point, but not at least for like another two years, maybe three years. <laughs> Like I need, I need a long cooldown yeah. time from this. Says you now. In three months, you're like, all right. So in Miris, we could really just we could tighten this thing up, and we need a new system for it. And I mean, every few weeks, I usually go to Casey or um, go to like George, one of the DMs, or Matt, and I'm like, so this is what I've learned about West Marches, and I think this is how we could do it better next time. <laughs> but yeah. All right. Uh, for my part, my. Last couple of weeks have actually just been dipping my toes into games that I had abandoned. So I'd been watching a Let's Play of Knights of the Old Republic, the first one, just because it had been a Which while. Which Let's Play? And, uh, the Super Best Friends one. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been into their Let's Plays recently. Um, and that, that created an itch in me mm. to not play KOTOR 1 because they did a good job of being really completionist with it um but i had never i have never replayed kotor 2 i Mm. played it through the first time once through light once through dark okay so i played it once (laughs) replayed it once uh but it's been 10 years since i played it at least so i downloaded that on steam and i downloaded some of the mods that people have made to actually complete the game now because some of the stuff got cut from the the actual uh, uh, market release, and wouldn't you know it, my computer has an error running it, and I can't. Play um, it. that's very common. Actually, I was going to ask how you're playing it because uh, Kotor Two is notorious for having a terrible PC port. I still have my old discs for it that ran on XP. I have no idea how they'd fare on a modern OS, so I might try that. But what I ended up doing instead was re-downloading the Old Republic, the MMO. And just logging in and start working through some of the main storylines of the characters that I had never done. And it's scratching that itch. Um, 
I don't know though. I really would like to play Kotor two again. There are just there are some Bioware games that are very deserving of a modern day remaster. Mm. Agreed. And instead, we're getting at them. Agreed. <laughs> Hard agree. Wait, wait, <laughs> wait. Are you off the Anthem train now? <laughs> oh, I mean, Kip and I played it that first weekend, and I haven't touched it since. <laughs> that was okay. the last. That was the last pre order that Bioware earned from me, because. Everyone hated on Andromeda. It had problems. I liked Andromeda. I still I thought it too. was a fun game. I was like, okay, you know what? The Bioware name is shaky right now, but still holds sway. But yeah, after pre-ordering Anthem, that was definitely a mistake. So I mean, how many people have to leave the company before it's you can no longer consider it Bioware? You know what I mean? Like that's that's where I'm at. <laughs> that's, because that's it's totally point. different now than it was back when they made the games that we loved. Um and yeah and with andromeda like yeah it's like the ship of theseus right exactly yeah yeah um but uh and then with andromeda like i bought it and i played like three hours and then i just put it down and i never went back to it and i keep looking at it on my download list like i should re-download that and actually go through it but i just don't like it's not i don't know nothing else we should hop on for multiplayer sure because we played but don't you unlock multiplayer that's true. Don't you unlock multiplayer stuff through single player or no? Um, they're interconnected and you can enhance how quickly you do one versus the other and like transmit sure. items, but you can still totally just play multiplayer. Do I have to get to a certain point in the story to play multiplayer? I don't think so. Okay. Because if not, then that's sick. Yeah. But if uh, yes, I, then I, I don't know. Like, oh, I did just finish Spider Man. I literally just 100 percented Spider. I 100 percented Spider Man today. God, isn't um, that a good fucking game? Yeah, and I finished it, and I was like, "Damn, I'm 100 percent." Like, there's literally nothing else for me to do. <laughs> like, but there's the <laughs> DLC I got to go through. So, yep, DLC. Ah, DLC starts pretty okay, slumps in the middle, and then ends pretty well, in my opinion. But still worth playing because Spider Man is just. Oh my generally God. a great game so when i got um when i unlocked the spider-man 2099 suit oh yes oh, my i did too. not wear any other suit the original dark one because i i switched back and forth between that one and like the the armored gray one nope i just stuck with the i tried like i put other ones on just to try them out but the fact they're so smart because they made the powers modular so you can just pick the mm-hmm. power from whatever suit you want yep. so i he's totally kitted out to do all electrical stuff and be like all i'm future spider-man like i'm like oh it's so fun yeah i love it anyway great great game Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um so tour oh yeah and then i dipped a toe back into overwatch because why not and it's still really fun bastion's still a shit character but that's fine (laughs) the new the new tank they added sigma is very fun to play and sigma's fun yeah i think a really cool um addition to kind of the the tank out and baptiste i had never played baptiste he's all right Mm -hmm. yeah that's me so guys i think that's gonna wrap us up for episode 68 of mythos busters we're gonna catch you for 69 and our iron man prep we'll see you at arkham knights bye